Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 585, recorded Tuesday, November 21st, 2017. Sous vide or not sous vide? MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Tracker, a coin sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit the tracker.com slash MacBreak to save 20% off any order. And by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy to use cloud accounting software used by over 10 million people. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash MacBreak. And by Jamf Now, Apple management software for Mac, iPad, and iPhone devices. Visit jamf.com slash MacBreak to create your free Jamf Now account and manage your first three devices absolutely free. Time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news from all around the world. Renee Ritchie is in Montreal, Canada. iMore.com is his affiliation. Hi, Renee. Look I've got you. snow on the ground already, Leo. Winter oh, is here. Winter is coming. Yes. Now it's here. Wow. That's amazing. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty chilly here. We're getting down in the 60s now. Huh. <laughs> I feel terrible for you, Leo. How are you going to survive? Actually, it was more like 48 <laughs> the other night. That was really cold. Uh, Alex Lindsay also joining us from his uh, jaunts around the world of the Pixel Core. Good to see How's you. How's my Skype connection? Your I, Skype I connection, sharp. as usual, perfection itself. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm here. Perfection I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in the room. It's amazing. Yeah. And from the Chicago Sun-Times, the lovely and talented Andy Anatko. Hey, Andy. Good to see you. Hello. Greetings from high lunar orbit uh, from the crew of Apollo 14. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the <laughs> No, that's all right. We, 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 most, yeah, the only reason I don't care that much is that most people uh, listen to shows. In fact, I think we're, we're really kind of more coming to the conclusion that video was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, Eventually audio, it's going to come around. As long as the audio is good. Well, you know, it's a time thing for most people. They don't have time to, to watch something. They well, have I time think the to format of the show like is this. Also, it's just people talking. They might as well just listen in the car, right? So, uh, so nobody knows your your audio is delayed. <laughs> it just sounds like it's well, right on time. I don't care as long as nobody knows I didn't shave this morning. That's fine. <laughs> actually, your audio. Somebody's saying, and I think that's actually an accurate way of putting it. Your audio is on time. Your video is <laughs> off. This video is fast. The audio is perfect. <laughs> mm. All right. Not perfect. Well, maybe perfect. The best laptop ever made, Marco Arment. Did you read his uh, his piece yep. about the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro? It said, uh, you know, ostensibly the 2015 edition, although you could still buy it in the Apple store. No, yep. uh, no touch bar. Um, you know, it's missing some of the... Neat new features, but it is SSD. It does offer quad i7 processors, plenty of memory, and it has uh, it has jacks. It has ports two. I will count them two. You like this one? Yeah, I think it's the best. The, the MagSafe. Ever made. I still have it. I'm 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 using one right now. Yeah, and in fact, there's newer ones out there, and I'm still using full size that one HDMI. The, you still get Thunderbolt, which is nice. Two yep. Thunderbolt. You get a SD card reader. Golly. Um, I think Apple would have, they would have been fine with the transition if they had just put USB-C on one side, just taking where the HDMI and the USB and the SD card are and just made that, you had two USB-Cs and then left our other side, at least for a, a version or two, left that other side there to allow people to kind of transition. Right? Other reason than, Marco likes it is it has a 99.5 watt hour battery. I did not know this, but the carry-on limit for commercial airlines yeah. is 100. Yeah. So it's it's right just just a skosh below the the well, max. Apple doesn't make any that are that are over a hundred. I mean, this is well, sometimes you hear had. people complain like, why don't they put more battery in a tablet or in a laptop? And legally, they would not be allowed to ship it to you if they did. So wow. that's why sometimes there's speakers and things right. that you know take up space. Yeah. So ninety nine point five watts. So you're getting good watt hours. You're getting good uh, battery life. Yep. Even though it's a giant screen, and I came after reading this article. It was the middle of the night. I came this close to buying one. <laughs> I thought, no, I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. I have. Yeah. But what the question really, the reason I bring this up, first of all, it's Marco. And I think he carries a lot of weight in the Apple world. Uh, is 
What is Apple's going to redesign, I imagine, the PowerBooks, or MacBook Pros this year, 2018, this coming year. Uh, what Would they ever abandon things like the touch bar and say, you know what, we were wrong? Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think they would ever abandon the touch bar. I think that they would have to keep it in the, as an option in the product line. My question is going to be, do they take a step back and return to at least the 2015, 2016 style keyboards? Do they take what they consider to be a step back and actually put a SD card reader and an HDMI port and a standard USB three, uh, excuse me, USB A style uh, port uh, for USB three on the side of it? Uh, because I, I, you've, we've been over this time and time again, and I always hear from uh, people who are very, very sad when they hear me say that the new MacBook is not a good computer. But you're uh, not but alone. It is, I mean, I know it's selling exactly. well, but I still don't have I, well, I'm, glad, I'm, not, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that I'm no longer so, alone. I'm glad that I'm no longer <laughs> sounding crazy. But yeah. it's like at some, I think that this is. I, I gave a talk in which I just as a, uh, I gave a talk last week. Uh, at uh, PHP World, and I, <laughs> I might be misremembering, but I, I mentioned in passing of talking about all, I've talked about every single tech company that was out there and what's going well, what's going poorly for them, and I just made a comment about the MacBook Pro, and I think that was an that, that was an actual applause break. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God, the hate, the hate. Thank you. Give me your hate. It makes me more powerful. Well, it's telling that Apple still sells this model. I mean, this really doesn't well, they, fit they can, in. Yeah. They, oh yeah, they, I mean, well, they, 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 they have a the they, they have tradition of yeah they have a tradition of make, of holding on to the old one while they're doing the new one, uh, often because government and other big, big businesses they can they certify from IT that yes we will allow our people to put in a requisition for this computer they will not have done that for the new model until they've had time to take a look at what it does so that's one of the reasons why these things stay on the price list. Ahead, so I, I say this as someone who I, I have both. I have the 2015, right? 2015 MacBook Pro and I have the most recent MacBook Pro and I literally never use the old one unless there's some obscure VPN I have to connect to. I like the new one better in every single way. But as someone who writes about Apple for a living and has an audience, it is unacceptable that half my audience really dislikes it. Not that they find it worse than the original, but actively hates the keyboard and hates the things. And that's a big problem because you can, one person can like it or not like it, but you have to have a computer that you're selling to everybody. And I have to wonder if maybe when they move to face ID and away from touch ID, they can sort of call a mulligan and just say, well, because uh, the reason the touch bar exists is in part for Touch ID because they had to have a separate display that would show Apple Pay uh, so that nobody could hack into it and mess around with the different number amounts. So that's all driven by the Touch ID and the T1 processor. And if you sort of pull that out and make it Face ID, you could say, well, we don't need this anymore. So we are going back to this. And oh, by the way, you know, we've heard you about the keyboards and these have so much more area. And I think USB-C just didn't materialize the way Apple hoped it would. They hoped there'd be a huge amount of USB-C gear on the, on the market and it just hasn't. I think they have to realize that is a very stark reality as well. Yeah, I doubt that they'll go back. I mean, the problem is it doesn't really matter. I mean, from a bottom line perspective, I mean, they, they want to keep moving the, the technology <laughs> forward, but I don't think that they're going to bother to change their, their dyes, you know, um, you know, plus for that, they're selling for well. I mean, no matter what we say, uh, uh, yeah, we, see, we see them around. I mean, yeah. it's a different that's market that's though. It's a mainstream market. It's not, their professionals are not happy and that's core to their biz. That's core to their yeah, influence right. in their business. Yeah, I mean, I think most people that I see that are using them are, are definitely folks that are managing people, not necessarily manager books in the, in the trenches. Yeah. I mean, we've got probably, I don't know, we've got lots, lots of these retinas and they are workhorses. I mean, we have been, they have been on every continent and all kinds of hot, few cold. People, I would include myself say it's the last use good macbook pro it may be the last one and it may be the last well, forever yeah yeah <laughs> that's, well, also, it, it, that's so disappointing it's it's especially problematic because the only uh, pros are a special breed they're usually they're using apps that they're not focused on loyalty to a brand they're focused really on here's how much time i spend and here's how much money i get paid or i earn for every hour that i spend and most of the tools that they're using are actually either multi-platform or there is something just as good on the other side of the fence. So they're really in a position where if it's not, if it doesn't, if these people don't feel as though this last MacBook is just a freak outsider, oh, well, they made one crap MacBook. Okay, well, they'll, I'm sure they'll be back on form the next time. If they have been increasingly less satisfied with the MacBooks that they've been forced to buy over the past X iterations of buys that they've made, 
that's when they start to say, okay, I'm going to give up. There's, there's, it's stupid that I, every time that I, I decide that no, this isn't the year I'm going to buy a Windows notebook that has all the features I want, all the power I want, all the convenience that I want, uh, and cost probably cost less money as well. No, I'm going to stick with my Mac. That's the day. That's the day that they jump ship. And really, you have to be an Xcode developer to be in a position where you have to, you you need a a pro uh, laptop and you have no option but to buy a pro MacBook. Is the iMac Pro going to make pro – let me ask Alex this since you're the <laughs> most likely to spend $5,000 on a new iMac. Is it going to make pros happy and is it going to calm think, the waters? I don't know if it will calm the waters. I think what will really calm the waters is is a Mac Pro um, that Supposedly is – Supposedly in development. In development. Nothing um, about it. You know, something that really looks like it. But I think this is going to – my guess is, and I have not heard – uh, I don't have any inside information um, at all, but I think that Apple went to Pixar and said, you know, what would what you would guys you use? <laughs> yep. right. And they, they gave them a spec and then they built something to that spec because, you know, a company like a production company doesn't care, uh, you know, the, the, the cost that we think about, $16,000 for a workstation, that's not a big deal because, you know, the most expensive thing is labor, you know, so it being fast and easy to use and easy to manage. Those are all things that are very valuable to a, to a production company. This is such a beast. It would support three 5K displays, the internal display and two external displays. That's that's a beast. That's, I can't wait. And it's space gray, so you know it's say. expensive. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, base 18, model has 32 gigs of RAM, but you can get up to 128 gigs. Base model has eight core uh, Xeon processor, but you can get to 18 cores. Starts with a terabyte SSD, but you can go to four terabytes and on and on and on. I mean, the bummer for me is that it's still on a Radian. I mean, you know, it's, I really prefer an NVIDIA. Everybody you know, would. Everybody Apple's would. so tied to ATI. I don't well, it's, it, Apple wants to control the drivers and I mean, NVIDIA AMD. wants to control the drivers. And that's why yeah. they, that's why they, they don't butt do heads. Because the problem is, is that a lot of the OS runs, uses the drivers. And so the problem is, is that if you, if NVIDIA got behind or something didn't work, uh, it's an inter it's not just a oh your game doesn't run fast enough the whole OS doesn't work and and that's the that's the that's Apple's issue and Nvidia's and issue it's is not they, like the it's not like the windowing server isn't completely broken in High Sierra anyway on external <laughs> graphics yeah. yes oh. yeah it does uh, it, it does respond to the uh, the ports issue it has on the back a lot all of those ports yeah. that should have been on the MacBook Pro it's got four <laughs> Type C ports four type a ports both usb yeah, they're not screwing three. around this time yeah it's got yeah. an sd card slot and it's got a ethernet jack that supports 10 gigabit ethernet which i mean we have 10 gigabit ethernet but i doubt i don't i wonder if even pixar has 10 gigabit ethernet to the <laughs> desk that is crazy probably have fiber <laughs> yeah that is well, a little a little bit of future proofing is okay in a five thousand to ten thousand dollar computer yeah, i yeah. would say that's a good point but, yeah yeah and it's also it's also important to say that uh, the iMac Pro they can really go nuts here because there still is the mid range iMacs that are going to be available if they if they want if, if people want a more conservative design if they want a more affordable design uh, the i7 based iMacs are still super super powerful they are workstations for people who do not work at Pixar. Uh, and for pe people who don't have, you know, an Alex level uh, need for intensity, uh, can uh, do just fine with an iMac, uh, and so it just gives them a top level option. I think that what we, what Apple desperately needs to r keep sight of is that, again, they're the only manufacturers of Macintosh computers, so they have to produce everything that is needed. Not necessarily everything that users want, but every th every model that users need in order for this to be a vibrant portfolio of computers. And so if they so if they only have the pro level thing and then they've got a thousand dollar kind of crap computer but nothing in between, that's a but that's a bad thing for the foundation of the future of the Mac. I think I think that's I mean I I would have never said this five years ago, but I really wish that they would license the OS and just let people yeah. build build stuff uh, if all, if for all what they, we want. If all they did was if all they did was allow it to be bought to be to run in virtualization, if yep. they were allowed to run in VirtualBox, even if it were for the the OS is always free if you're running on a Mac hardware. For hundred dollars, we will sell you a version that will that is licensed to run or has the hooks to run in the VirtualBox environment, which is an open source uh, virtualization tool that would solve so many problems that so many people have. I mean, the, the main thing is the, the hard part is is that it. It would be you know, it can't you can't the only reason that we would want to have customization is for speed so if the virtualization is slowing it down by even 10 or 15 percent you wouldn't get problem. any hardware acceleration 
Sorry? It's my guess. You wouldn't get any hardware acceleration is right. my guess, which would be a very different experience. Yeah, so, well, I mean, are we burying the stinger here if we don't mention the, a the A10 processor in the iMac Pro? That's uh, actually where I was going next. Okay. Uh, awesome. This is, uh, again, Stephen uh, Trotton Miller. Has, uh, is that his name? I, I always get he it wrong. Trotton, Trotton, Trotton Smith. Smith. And Jonathan yeah. Levin have, uh, once again, parsed source code. Uh, <laughs> and, and according to the Bridge OS 2.0 software package from Apple, it appears that the new iMac Pro will have its own A10 Fusion coprocessor. That's the previous generation processor in the iPads. And that's currently in the iPads. And uh, why? Why, Renee, would it have an A10 processor? So for a couple of reasons. So I, we saw this with the T1 in the MacBook Pros, that it allows Apple to create a secure environment so you can do things like Touch ID and Apple Pay without worrying about uh, a lot of the hardware attack vectors that you have on a more traditional computing infrastructure like an Intel uh, and uh, an OS system. Uh, and it, it's going to let them do secure boot on this, which probably is the inverse of what Alex wants with a free and open <laughs> Mac OS. But well, it'll, it'll let them there, verify. There is some concern that this, that, that would like future versions of Mac OS require this uh, preventing Hackintoshes, for right. instance. Yes, the hardware. The unfortunate but thing. But it, would it let sounds them like they're going exactly the opposite direction of what we, right. what we want. Mm -hmm. It would also let them do things like handing over because the Intel processors are still hungry. Even if they do a very good job of sleeping, they're still hungry. And you could offload a lot of tasks, including things like Yo Simbo instead of you know Siri right. thing, whatever. I can't, not allowed to say. But you could hand mm -hmm. that off. You could hand PowerNap off. You could hand all sorts of system processes off so that it would not have to wake up the big and probably getting bigger because you know there, there's a race now between AMD and Intel who could throw more cores and more threads at things without bringing up that big, hot, heavy processor and just do everything on a nice, cool ARM chip off to the side. Yeah. Like here, yeah, but uh, also uh, it could. Uh, it's not a first step into an ARM Mac OS, though, is it? They've had that for know. years. I mean, it, they just haven't pulled the trigger on it, and that would probably manifest not in an iMac Pro, but in a in a small MacBook where they could control the entire thing the way they do an iPad Pro. Yeah. Although the only thing that kind of got my when I was reading the story that got my curiosity up is remember that this is going to, this is probably going to be one of the most attractive things for Xcode developers to to buy as their as their build machine. It's kind of interesting to at least think about An what emulator. What, a, 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 there have often I been fall. complaints from developers about saying that there are things that they would have they have to now find a, a, once or twice I've had to like a, because I have a library of about pretty much everything that Apple has made or a, at the time I will have like a loaner of the you know like 17.2 inch iPad Pro Delta you know <laughs> like I've, unfortunately I, I, uh, that uh, Apple will not allow this person to deploy something in the App Store until it's been tested on real hardware and no the emulator will not work for these purposes and so they need to get a get a hold of real hardware stuff like that and also if in some t again future proofing uh, there if you if you're spending 5 or 10,000 dollars for a workstation and let's say that you are inside Apple and you know that there is going to be something for which it's going to be really, really useful and helpful for a developer to be able to test against an actual uh, iOS style processor. It might, for that, that reason and also all the reasons that Renee mentioned, it might be a good reason to let's round this up from $7,991 to an even $8,000 by including a $9 uh, mobile CPU in there. Well, and I, 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 if you were going to go to all, uh, and the processor the the smoothest way to do that would be to have it sharing the, the the board and slowly taking processes over rather than trying to just do a big swap just saying it would just, take years just, it would take years yeah, but they I have just, that i don't i don't see apple doing something like that I, I, find, I find them more about trying to tail off a, a dependency on the Mac, move pe more people to iOS directly, uh, rather than try to move Mac on uh, on ARM. Although, uh, like I've, uh, as I said, for the first time, the MacBook Nothing came on board, that it really does look like, a, you, you, you take it apart, and it looks like something that was designed to run off of an ARM or a mobile processor, because it's just such a tiny, it's like a phone-style board nice. that's running Mac OS. And it made me, it got, it got my interest level up again about, hey, maybe they are really thinking about introducing uh, a line of ARM-based Macs, either to get the price down or to give us the, the make sure we still get that 12-hour, uh, 13-hour, 14-hour, maybe 18-hour uh, battery life on a Mac uh, instead of envying the 10 or 12 hours that, uh, that I'm getting on my iPad. There is an ARM chip in the MacBook Pro, that, but that's just for the touch bar. The T1, touch yeah, ID. For, the, for Apple Pay. And it'll be interesting to see like how quickly with all of these we're going to get uh, facial recognition. You know, the uh, it feels like mm -hmm. it's how fast be in can they make everything. those sensors? 
What? <laughs> yeah. How fast can they make those sensors? Yeah. We have face, uh, you know, we have Windows Hello, uh, face recognition in, in Windows devices now. It works fairly well. Right. Mm. Um, and that's where the, but there, you do have to have a depth sensing camera. There is more than just the regular yep. Yep. Logitech no, camera in there. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 interesting to think about the differences of what the uh, what the security means on a desktop versus what it means on uh, on a phone. On a phone, you're worried about leaving this thing behind someplace, and then someone picks it up and now can uh, do online banking from your device. You're worried about how you just leave the room and your kids make purchases with a <laughs> desktop computer. Once they are physically in front of this screen, they kind of own the home. They're, they're, it's, you're basically trying to mitigate the damage of what they can do now that they're sitting in front here and they have access to USB ports. Uh, and the, the, and the, the idea of having uh, Hey Shlomo working on the desktop, that's the probably, it, from my experience and from talking to other people, it seems to be the least useful place for one of these voice assistants when you're, again, sitting sitting in front of a computer with a mouse and a keyboard. Maybe you don't necessarily need a voice assistant. What you need is a window that you can type commands into. It's nice, but you don't necessarily need it. Apple needs to have a cylindrical object sitting on a table that can respond to voice commands. And we'll get to that later on, I'm sure. It's not the as a really valuable thing to have. Oh, excuse me. It's not as valuable a thing to have on an iMac. I guess I, I oh, feel like un unless yeah. Apple's sort of working on uh, something different because they they have um, their voice assistant on multiple devices from your iPhone to your iPad to your Apple TV, uh, eventually the HomePod. Now with the Mac, and if you think about it the way you think of like uh, a mesh router network, and you start having mesh assistants where. You don't necessarily have to put them in every room, but you have multiple devices that can all do that voting process and determine it. Um, once you string those together, it could provide something pretty robust. Uh, that's fairly unique to Apple because not many people have that wide array. I mean, Google probably, but not many people have that wide array of, of assistant devices yet. Well, I, and I, mm. I think that there's a there's a future where we're not using passwords anymore. And, and I think that being able to have biometric on everything that I own is something that is part of that future. I mean, you know, I just it, every time now, you get used to using like, your B of A app and putting your finger down or looking at your phone and you just start thinking about how stupid having to type long passwords. It's nice in. when your uh, <laughs> computer recognizes you and without a lot of effort logs you in. I had, yeah. uh, it's funny because for years with phones, we had to type the code. Right. It was just like animals. Like or animals. Actually, or and not, along comes touch that, ID and now it's just, we just expect to I use it think, right away. Okay, I finally got that, my 10 and I, I didn't <laughs> think that the touch ID, I think I thought that Renee was over overstating the whole like oh it's a pain you gotta put your finger down and everything else it is i'm all i still have my seven i'm still like on my way i'm out. back on the pixel today and i can't i'm, I'm using i'm like oh i gotta put the fingerprint thing because yeah, like, uh, i forgot really? it existed like I, I got to the point where not always but often enough i forgot i was actually doing authentication right and now right. I'm, I'm doing it again each time right so but make, sure we, make sure we think kind of big about this, though. I was uh, like on a desktop. Imagine uh, you know how uh, you're not supposed to, but you see the verification checkbox on uh, on Twitter and other social media services saying that this is definitely Andy Anatko's account because he has we've proven this is who he is. So now you know. Now you can also do a Google search and find out more about this person who's saying such nasty <laughs> things about Star Trek Three. Uh, imagine something similar to that. If there were a if there were a broad standard for. Uh, like 3D face ID so that not by logging in or anything, but just by the fact that I'm sitting at the computer and the Twitter, my, my Twitter, uh, uh, my, my, my Twitter client or my Instagram client or my Facebook client will put like a purple check checkbox simply saying that, oh, by the way, via face ID, we have authenticated that the person who said this is Andy Anatko, definitely Andy Anatko. Uh, so that would sort of uh, obviate people trying to be trolls on the internet, uh, political parties <laughs> trying to pretend to be somebody else. Uh, it's, 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 it, I'm not saying it's, it's, it would be a bad, it's a stupid thing to have face ID on a desktop, but the, the cool stuff is going to be stuff we can, can't really think about right now. It's going to be the stuff that <laughs> makes us really realize exactly how we can improve the world by making sure that fools have to stand up and say yes i be that idiot well, and, and and i and i totally get that the, the there's a value to an on, anonymous being able you know especially in, a, in oppressive regimes and so on and so forth being able to say things anonymously whether right. or or be able to do it as a as a um whistleblower like there are reasons to have anonymity but we we manage a lot of events a lot of big events that have a lot of comments and we have to manage them on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, like all these other things. And the difference between Facebook and, and YouTube are dramatic because, uh, you know, the YouTube comments are just useless. I mean, because it's all anonymous. And so you just have, I mean, the most vile pile of horrible nuclear mess on a big event in, in YouTube to the point where most of our clients just turn it off. 
And uh, and Facebook, you can actually, I mean, there's some there's some rough comments, but nothing like what you see when people don't have any uh, Authentication is a big problem all around. And it is interesting. I think you've already made a step in that direction, though. I mean, it's even with Touch ID, the fact that you could buy stuff at the Apple store and Touch ID to authenticate was Apple's yeah. way of doing it, at least internally. Right. And it, I'm not sure when this emerged. Is it maybe with the iPhone 10 and Face ID? But I noticed that now when I log into apps and I log into uh, websites, Apple offers to save the password in the keychain. Is that new, Renee? Yeah. When did that start? So, so that started before, but you would have to authentic. You you couldn't authenticate to do it. You would have to do it manually, uh, and they thought that Touch ID was kind of too slow for that process. Ah. But with Face ID, they thought it was fast enough that they would just auto fill it for you. It's very as long automatic. as they could register Face ID. And, uh, yeah, and I that's was the beginning, I think, of this Face ID authentication. Uh, but it's only I, on the iPhone right now. But I, I like was shocked it. by it because Joanna Stern posted her review and I hit the link and it took me to the Wall Street Journal login page. And r I wasn't expecting anything. I thought I would have to start typing it in. And it just it did the little spin went, around, okay. filled it in. And I was at the review. Yeah. And I just tweeted her back. Like, what happened? It's so awesome. So you have to give permission to record the password the first time you log in, right? And from then have, on, yeah. it will store. You have to. It'll say, do you want me to save this in Keychain? And you say yes. So it's important to realize one thing, though. So I, I never use iCloud Keychain because it doesn't have a master password like LastPass or 1Password. Right. And I never wanted to be in a situation where at a conference or at an emergency, I handed somebody my phone exactly. and suddenly they had my credit card data. Exactly. And that hasn't changed, but it will do Face ID. So what I've done is I sort of bifurcated. And now all my really important secret stuff is still in 1Password. But I don't really care if someone else logs into the Wall Street Journal. So exactly. anything that I consider to be trivial, I now yeah. put in iCloud Keychain. Plus the fact that it's backed with Face ID makes me a yeah. little bit more reassured by that because uh so i yeah i started using it I, for the exactly the same reasons i don't use one password i use last pass but i had the exact same thought yeah. in my head well i'll do this for non non-critical passwords because it is so damn convenient so yeah. just go yeah wall street journal i'm, I'm already in and you're right in <laughs> yeah interesting article in uh, uh the apple machine learning uh blog machine learning journal uh about how face id works they're using an on-device deep neural network that uh, was originally uh, created uh, in an academic environment. And uh, I forgot the name of it. They say it down here. Uh, but this is really Overfeet. Overfeet. Mm -hmm. uh, O-F-E-A-T. Uh, and uh, this was uh, popularized. Some simple ideas that showed DCNs... Uh, to be quite efficient at scanning an image for an object. So this is academic research, and now they're applying it. It's If you're into machine learning, I think this would be probably a fairly uh, interesting uh, article to read about how this all, all works. Apple's a little peek inside the kimono about how they're doing this. <clears throat> and it does, you know, this is how, this is, Renee, am I right? This is how it's learning to get better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this when you stop to think about it, again, like when they're describing it, it's less like coding a machine or coding a computer and more like training a pet, which still scares me because if the Terminator came back now, he wouldn't have to go to a phone book and say Sarah Connor. He would just sort through quickly Instagram, learn what her facial features are, start scanning for gait analysis and walk right up to her. <laughs> right. So I mean, like, Sarah they, Connor, they really come with me. Yeah. Uh, totally. They really are learning and improving. And I think after you let them loose, you're no longer responsible. They, they start yeah. to improve faster than you actually realize. Yeah. It's really it, – so good article, uh, machinelearning.apple.com if you want to uh, I, read more. I really thought it was interesting about the heavy – you know, the idea that you use heavy, heavy iron to get most of the, most of the yeah. work done and then yeah. just, just hand off the mostly it's – like, it's like basically I, I thought of it as, <clears throat> as uh, like pre-cooked meals. <laughs> you know, for, it did, for it did point out, though, that uh, because Apple's uh, iCloud photo library is cloud-based and due to Apple's strong commitment to user privacy, we couldn't use iCloud servers for computer vision computations because they encrypt the uh, data before it's sent to cloud storage. So bringing deep learning-based computer vision solutions to our customers, we had to address directly the challenges of getting deep learning algorithms running on the iPhone. And that they is have the advantage. That, like their their biggest, like Google for sure, and Amazon, their biggest advantage are the servers. Apple's biggest advantage is the silicon. And you look back at it, and they were building the neural networks in three years ago. I mean, they started that project. And I was like, again, I'm living on the. I don't, well, I said this before the show, but I'm living on the Pixel 2 XL this week. And there's just little things I noticed. Like when I pulled up the phone and I went to portrait mode, I thought it was broken because I didn't see anything different. And it took me like 10 minutes to figure out that I took the picture, then went to photos, then opened the photos, waited a few seconds. It would look at the photo 
photo and apply the the take the depth mask and apply the blur, but it wasn't doing it in real time. And that's the sort of thing that Apple can do on the device in real time in the photo viewfinder. And that's the same thing that's letting them do. Like it, it's not anywhere near a giant server cloud, obviously, but it's powerful enough that they can do the facial recognition locally yeah. and provide the privacy. That's for what it. a lot of this article is about: is how you solve those problems because you can't use Big Iron. Uh, to do it on you have to use on the yeah. phone resources uh, let's take a little break come back uh, with more we will talk about the home pod now delayed uh, and actually uh, mark german's amazing story of how how the home pod happened almost didn't happen and a whole lot more and of course uh, and I, this just happened this morning the fcc has announced its plan on uh, repealing net neutrality and we'll talk a little bit about uh, what that might mean uh, and that's something uh, everybody's a little bit nervous about. Our show today brought to you by The Tracker. If you ever lose stuff, you're going to want to find thetracker.com slash MacBreak because it is. And by the way, the website's harder to find than actually anything else after you get The Tracker. T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-R dot com slash MacBreak. The Tracker is a small coin-sized device. Actually, there's two of them. There's a Tracker Bravo, anodized aluminum, size of a quarter, very lightweight. And then the new Tracker Pixel which I really like. It has uh, LED lights in it. It's the smallest Bluetooth tracker ever made, uh, it lightest, and it really is great because you can put it on your wallet, you can put it on your keys, you can put it on your remote, you can put it on your bike, you can put it in your luggage. You can put it, it's so small you can put it anywhere, and I have it on my keys, and I love the fact that it lights up because how often is it that you drop your keys somewhere dark, like in the couch cushions or, or in your car, and those lights make it really easy to find. Separation alerts mean if you leave your phone behind, uh, it'll, your keys will howl at you. If you leave your keys or your tracker behind, uh, it'll the phone will howl at you. You can even press a button on the tracker because of instant find my iPhone that'll make the phone ring even when it's silenced and vice versa. Whenever you leave your uh, tracker attached backpack, let's say, behind, you can look at the map on the app and see where it saw it last. And if somebody should take that backpack and move it, they have the world's largest crowd locate network, which is amazing. Anytime anybody with the tracker software, software walks by your tracker, it'll ping you and say, your tracker was just seen here on this place on the map. So it, it makes it possible, since there are 5 million trackers out there in the world, it makes it possible to find a misplaced item almost anywhere in the world. Don't worry about losing anything ever again. You could find it with the tracker. And by the way, Tracker's 30-day money-back guarantee means you have nothing to lose. One of the things I really like, unlike some of these other uh, uh, Bluetooth devices, you, the battery's replaceable on both the Tracker Bravo and the Tracker Pixel. So it goes and goes and goes, and then you put a battery in, and it goes and goes and goes some more. Pick your color, pick your tracker, and then take 20% off your order, however large, thetracker.com slash MacBreak, thetracker.com slash Mac break for 20% off your order. What a great holiday gift. If you're giving uh, expensive devices for the holiday season, put those in the stocking. Those are great stocking stuffers. The tracker.com slash Mac break. Ah, home pod. It ain't going to come out in time for the holidays. Womp, womp. Uh, womp, womp, womp. Early 2018, according to Apple, a brief statement said that the production process needs a little more time. Yep. We'll start shipping in the U.S., U.K., and Australia early 2018. I don't even know when that is. Before June 30th, uh, I think yeah. in U.S. Samoa. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Is that the That's, date line? It could be as late as that. Why is it held up? What? How hard can this be? Um, I mean, like, it's... It, 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 if you look at what has come out, so uh, Siri Kit for HomePod has shipped. That is done. Uh, and my understanding is all the Siri stuff is done. But AirPlay, um, AirPlay 2, which is a big part of this because it has no auxiliary port in it. Everything has to be streamed over AirPlay 2. AirPlay 2 was briefly in a beta, but it hasn't been in the most recent uh, betas. And it's not out yet. And uh, if you start looking at everything that's involved, because AirPlay 2, the original AirPlay, there are rumors that it was like a weekend project. And people, some people say that's true. Some people say it's not. But either way, it was, it was something that could just very quickly move audio and video signals around, but it was never robust. And AirPlay 2 is, is much more robust. It's it's better protected. It's more reliable. Um, it's got a much bigger buffer. And it also does multi-room, uh, which is something the original AirPlay didn't do and something that a lot of people really wanted it to do. And that has not shipped on iOS yet. So and, and that's a huge part of HomePod. So I would, I would think that that is probably the reason why. Well, that and everything that is associated with it is probably the reason why. It's that makes not a lot yet. of sense. That's yeah. hard stuff to do. 
That to do in stuff. a way yeah. that won't get you in a lot of bad reviews. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I think, but I think it also kind of points to a really bad organizational problem at Apple. The, we've had a, a consistent, a consistent thing that we uh, that I've been hearing about and that we've been seeing, like in in the actual field, is that there is the stuff that Apple's focused on, and then there's the stuff that they have to make time for. And so there, you don't you don't have this you don't have the organizational structure at you have at some other companies where you might have like here is our home entertainment speaker division where the most important thing they feel they're doing in the entire year is shipping out this new smart speaker. Whereas with Apple, one of their greatest strengths is that they have a very holistic view of the company. They're making one product, which is the Apple Omniverse. But the thing is, it's once you have the the favorite child, the iPhone 10, that you know, has a big math exam and they're really stressing out about it. Now, well, mom and dad both have to make sure they they buckle around the iPhone X to make sure it's happy, make sure it gets released. The other kids have to get ignored for a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry for for a tortured analogy, but that's the really the best way of doing it as a as a youngest child in a large family. I I know all about being ignored in favor of more favorite uh, children, uh, and it's just it's really embarrassing for Apple to make such a huge announcement at WWDC. And apparently you would do it only when you pretty sure, you're pretty sure about your timetables and not being able to even commit to, oh, it's going to be delayed until we're taking pre-orders now, but won't be able to ship until January 18th. The fact that there is no date for it, the fact that it is, we are going to give you until, we're going to give you an, a, a date that's, it could be anywhere up until June says that, wow, a lot of organizational stuff went horribly, horribly wrong in order for a mistake of that magnitude to happen, especially, in, um, I'll end it here, uh, with a product that was just locked and loaded to make a for to sell 10 times as many as they could possibly take orders for. You're talking about a, a cool looking uh, Apple speaker designed by Apple that looks really cool, that makes incredibly good music, that is semi affordable for an Apple product and it's going, uh, it's going out for sale right before during the holiday buying season. Oh my freaking God. God, that's like jumping out of the airplane and then, well, I did strap something on. Let's just see if it's a parachute. You don't make mistakes like that. It, they, I, I, the, the only mistake that Apple made was announcing it, in my opinion. I mean, the the, the issue is is that, I mean, all of these companies are having have trouble getting products out the door. You know, like you know, so they they all have have uh, timelines that are moving. They all have things that they were sure of that are they're, they're they're no longer sure of. That that is like that is what all these technology companies are doing all the time. Is is those they have things that stretch out by months or weeks or years or decades. I mean, they have all kinds of things that are aren't working and little glitches and you know, um, I've been developing a piece of software that was supposed to take a month and it's now. A year into it you know i mean it, that's the stuff <laughs> that happens you can't just throw money but, and more developers well, the at a problem like no that. because it's it's a well, handful of people that are thinking through it and so you can't yeah. add adding more people just makes it more complicated you know because right. now you've got a people bunch say of, well apple's so big they have so much money well, they have so many people they should good, be easy but it's not the reason that pe some people get paid a lot a lot of money at these companies is because some programmers it is a, are a lot better it than is others. seen yeah well, well and it's <laughs> and seen, like, we, <laughs> we, we talk about a lot of like the actual like if you're doing let's say compositing or, or whatever in in let's say it is not the the, the skill set of me doing what I need to do to do that is not hard. It is seeing the difference between what's good and bad, seeing the difference between what should be there and shouldn't be there. And and there's a handful of people that do that well. And as you said, there's a handful of people that program well or not. You know, and 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 the number of people like finding someone who's a good programmer, finding some programmers is one thing, finding good ones. If you're good, you're right. you you don't worry like the guy who complained about Google's, you know, policy. I bet you. I bet you he had a job, regardless of you know. Quietly, somebody hired him probably the week right. he walked out. You know, right. because because there's so much demand if you're a strong programmer, um, or or a mediocre programmer, um, that that it's a limited. Well, there's supply. also the mythical man month problem, which is even if you could get a programmer that's that good, you can't just throw them into the mix and say, okay, no, absolutely. this is going to make it twice as good. No, I mean, uh, if you every person you add down. might slow it down and yeah. may increase it by ten or fifteen percent. Right. I mean, that's right. that's the reality because you know there's just more more pieces, and I think that. Um, so you're that's an interesting point though that the mistake made was merely announcing just announcing it. I mean, they could have come out well, with it next year. I think the problem they feel is I think that they, as it said in the article, they felt blindsided by the echo. Yeah, you know. and there were a couple of things I found. This is Mark Gurman's uh, reporting, which coincidentally came out, you know, the same day Apple announced mm. it was going to be delayed. Hmm, wonder who was his source. In any event, this was originally prepared as a speaker. They they heard the echo, they got the echo, 
the day it came out and they said, you know what, the speaker's not good. We could make this with a better speaker. We got Siri. We could make this with a better speaker. So it was really about audio quality initially, uh, and less about the Siri ecosystem. At one point, there was one that was three feet tall. Right. Three well, I mean, feet they, tall. So <laughs> there were, there were, well, that's, and that's, here's the problem. Playing with, I, I, playing with I bet that speaker yeah. sounded good. <laughs> No, there, I mean, there were there were a ton of so there, there, this has been like the speak. And Apple's been working on speakers for a long time. We saw one with iPod Hi Fi, but right. they always have these projects, right. um, and they do tons of prototypes. The reason they have a lot of those machines is so they can spit out endless. Like we saw Johnny Ive have every you know, eighth of an inch size iPhone to figure out the two you actually wanted to ship. And this was a side so, project initially as well, right? This they're was, all, yeah, they're almost. I mean, it's a company is so it's uh, they have so much money and so many creative people that they can they, anything that we could dream up. They have the um, the resources to so prototype. They, but the it, Mark says they wanted to beat Bose. They wanted to beat JBL. They wanted to beat Harman Kardon. It wasn't yeah, really Siri was at incidental the at first. Yeah, it was yeah. just a convenient way to control it. And then right. when people started becoming when this started becoming a category, you have to rethink how important Siri is to the overall product and they were still for various reasons still focusing it as a speaker but it, if there is a knock against tim cook here it's that not just that they announced it early but uh, there is a theory in wall street that well not in wall street, there's, a, there's a theory that he feels pressure from wall street because they keep saying apple's not innovating and apple is behind and it's 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 not true like the apple watch didn't have to come out when it did the, the watch market was nascent the home assistant market now there is an incredible uh, reality distortion in America because you're lucky to have so many of them. But the international market for home assistance is tiny and very immature right now. So there's no reason to rush this to market. There's no reason to announce it. But the, the knock on him is that he feels so much pressure by Wall Street in these questions. Like, why isn't Apple in this category that they do announce these things early? And then you end up waiting for Apple Watch when it does come out. There's not enough supply. You end up waiting for a HomePod or AirPods. And when it comes out, there's not enough supply. And that's exactly what Alex and Andy are saying, that it becomes a complete perception issue that is almost entirely self-created. Under development yeah, well, for see, two just, years I, before it actually even became an official project. Right. Uh, the It's run now by uh, the former R R and D chief at Bowers and Wilkins at B and W, which makes right. some of the best speakers in the world, Gary Geeves, and uh, and, and two years ago uh, it got its you know own uh, location, and by 2016 they were testing the device inside uh, homes of employees not connected to the audio development. Well, so it was it was it's interesting, and, and they tried it. You know, the, the, it was the beam forming was a big part of it. Can we make great speakers that well, are? They've had that for years. An iPhone. They announced that what yeah. the iPhone four. It's, well, think, as yeah. has Echo, as has yeah. Sonos, even has beam forming in some of its speakers mm -hmm. now. Well, I mean, that's why I, I think that Apple, I don't think they were necessarily wrong to announce it at WWDC if they were completely confident they were going to make the date because it is, they are getting in really late to this market. It is vibrant. There are, they're selling like hotcakes. And everywhere. the competitors are and, not sitting back and waiting. You no, know, I Apple. asked a bunch right. of analysts and everybody, and everybody knew totally that. Not, and, like it's not, it's not vibrant though. It's, it's, it's very small. It doesn't make a lot of money yet. It's 50, not really a market that million, Apple would okay. typically enter. Right. Yeah, but okay, 50 so million 50 is like million, Apple Watch is bigger than that and that's considered a failure. Well, okay, and, and, well, if I if I sell 15 million units of something, I'm really happy. It's not not everybody yeah. has to be not everybody has to be Apple. Apple didn't have to get into the space, but if they were going to get in the space, they, if they're going to lay claim to somebody's 350 bucks for uh, for some sort of an audio product, they are going to have to make sure that again, if they went around the room and said, "Look, <laughs> we're going to go through every single one of you, and you're going to say go or no go. Are we going to be able to ship by the end of the year?" And if they the answer consensus is that yes, we can ship this uh, this HomePod by the end of the year, it's a really good it's it's there if they're going to sell it anyway you'd better say that by the way if you're going to be spending 350 dollars on a sonos product or on a bose product or in someone else's product maybe you want to put that money aside for our product which is not ready yet but it's definitely going to be shipping uh, but to, the thing that i got out of out of german's article is that it feels as though Apple, this is a case of Apple being way too precious about about the design for this thing. Uh, I think that the Apple Watch is a really great uh, example of how you don't have to get it all perfect in the first go. It was really terrible. With the, 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 the hardware was always wonderful, but the software had no sense of identity. It had no point of view. It was confusing, not just confusing for a risk top operating system. It was just, do the, it made me wonder, did the people who designed this know that this is going to be worn on a watch and operated with a fingertip? It it was so bad, but they it, it gave them time to do a couple of iterations to dial in on exactly what people wanted these for. And you don't know what people are going to buy something for until you make make it available for them to buy and then watch them use it. It also so might, the it might be a little they, gun shy after the failure uh, of the Apple Hi Fi. That was three hundred. Oh, that was that, that was that was, that was, that was so long ago. That was ages. That was <laughs> we, again. We that was ages ago. That was somebody else.
bring it. But, but I'm saying that the, the, the fact that Apple didn't immediately didn't immediately notice that yes, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Amazon Echo doesn't have a great speaker, but people are not spending 150 200 dollars for a tiny little tabletop speaker that is going to take the place of their Stonehenge speakers and their 5,000 watt amplifier. They're they're it's a it's a place to put it's something they're going to put in an office or in their kitchen, and the fact that they could set timers with it and do 5,000 things with it. That's why people are buying it. So the fact it was, it always seemed to be interesting from the get go that they were not saying they were, they're kind of skipping over the reasons why people are using Google home, the people why they're using Amazon echo. And they're saying, if you don't, don't buy two hundred dollar speakers that will definitely fill the room with beautiful sound Buy this one little grapefruit size speaker because it's way, way cooler. And, but it will also do automation. It will also improve our lives. No, no, no. But imagine the sound you'll get from this little grapefruit size speaker. And again, I'm, I'm, I don't doubt that it is wonderful sound, but that's not why, I, that's not why I buy a $300 speaker. It's why I buy two Amazon right. Echoes. It's why I, I buy three I guess I would Google think, I think that you kind of need it to be that though. I think it needs to be a, a great speaker because I mean, I own a Google home and I own, some echoes and I have a, you know, the, the little screen one, what are they called? The show. And, um, yeah. the, you know, I won't, the, the thing that I think is funny is they're putting all those work into Siri and, and I, you know, I don't need that or necessarily want it. I won't put it in my office. You know, I, I don't put any of those things in my office. I mean, I'm not going to discuss things. But in they're front of focusing them. on being a good speaker, which none of those devices That's what I'm saying. Like, are. As they're very they're useful. My, yeah, my, no. my wife uses the them. The my kids speak. use them all day. The people don't care, Andy. No, I'm saying that when you once you start spending three or four hundred dollars, there are a lot of really awesome uh, speak, uh, uh, PC type speakers that and Bluetooth speakers that cost three or four hundred dollars. And they don't do it by beam forming. They do it by often having two and two discrete speakers you put in two different corners of the room and they don't actually take. They visually they take up even less space than uh, the, uh, the the HomePod. I'm not. I don't. I don't think that Apple's again. I don't think Apple's being stupid for pursuing this line of view. But it would have been more interesting in hindsight if they said, "Let's just have a really good Apple designed speaker. Doesn't have to be the greatest, but it will be shipping and it will be very good." And over the course of the next one or two years of having to endure pundits like Andy and the rest of the people on blogs and stuff saying, "Oh, look how badly this." Okay, I would never complain about how badly something is selling but just to, just for just for example we'll have to endure a couple of years of pundits talking about how badly it's selling what a disappointment it is until we have that eureka moment after looking at how people are using this and we'll do new not even new hardware but new software that gives it complete and utter devastating relevance and i think the watch market is also you come back to another good example of apple got in late on that one and then just took over you know i mean like, like there was a lot of watches out there that were doing relatively good and then well, let's not forget that uh, the AirPods are Siri oh, and tablet. enabled, and right. uh, they are pretty good speakers. They go in your ear; they don't fill the room. Do does it, yeah, any of you? I'm curious. Tap your uh, ears and have use Siri on your AirPods. Yeah, although, I mean, I've, it has more options would, than iOS 11. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like with iOS 11, it has more options. Like you can you can have it do uh, skip forward and skip backward, and I turn it on to those just to try it. And inevitably, I want to do something else, and then I can't. I have, have to you ever sent a text message watch. from your AirPods? Yeah, sure. Um, okay. I use them when I'm walking and stuff. And if you people send me think it, of I just this. Tap it yeah, I never do it. Uh, and I think Siri has gotten much better in iOS 11. I, I'm I'm a little more likely to use it. Although my only problem with it, Leo, is like remember the old days when you had server farms, and once in a while it wouldn't work, and it's because you hit yes. one server that was out of date or was yes. down. That's what Siri always feels like. I can tell it to turn on my lights ten times, and eight times it'll work fine, and two times it'll say, "Sorry, we can't turn on lights." I'll, what do you mean? I mean, you turn them on every day. <laughs> you turn I, them and, off. And it feels like I'm hitting that one server that just is down. Yeah. Or has just not been updated. Well, it doesn't take many of those experiences to sour you and and uh, on the whole experience. I'll tell you why I, I, this has come up for me because I got the Google Pixel Buds, which, yeah. by the way, are an insane disappointment. Uh, I have to get them anyway. But uh, yeah. but, but <laughs> there's, there's the things, a good argument for not releasing something on time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there, I don't I've know what's happened. Mine have stopped pairing. I can't pair it to anything. I have to. I guess they broke. I don't know. Right. I, I used them once. Uh, but the the thing that was interesting, and I did try for a day wearing them all the time and using them to connect with the assistant and sending right. texts. And when you get a ping on your phone, when you get a notification of any kind, it reads it to you, gives you a chance to respond. And I found that a very interesting uh, where, case for wearables. Well, I, I think useful. That, but I haven't done that. But wait for the AirPods. translation. Answer the question. The translation I, I, is a problem because 
it, well, it's just a problem. It doesn't work very well. I think that when you look at some of the patents that Apple, you know, push forward and what people are working on, I do think that you're they fixed that we're Bluetooth. going towards. Oh, they, they fixed, fixed Bluetooth, they fixed Bluetooth. And, and the and the everything that's wrong with the Pixel Buds has to do with Bluetooth, frankly. But I, but I think that they're I think Apple is moving. They're going to release in the next two to three years a earbud that is designed for you to just leave it in your ear. Like it's just you're just going to put them in and yeah, the connection to the rest of the world, yeah. the connection to your and system. And that's kind of what I wanted to do and was doing for one day, the one day they worked with the Pixel Buds. And that was actually, mm -hmm. I was at the airport picking up my son and it was very useful. You felt like you were connected. You didn't have to pull your phone yeah. out of your pocket. Mo yeah. right. Motorola had a product called the Motorola Hint. That was, a, that, yeah. and it, it was a Bluetooth earbud, but it was, it wasn't stereo. It was only one, but it also came like the uh, AirPods in a, in a charging case. So you could wear them all day. Yep. And it was, it really hid itself very, very nicely. There weren't any antennas, little stubby antennas sticking out. It just sort of like, you know, spackled over <laughs> the work, the loops and the whirls of the inside of your ear. So you really didn't know that someone was wearing one until they turned and looked, looked this way. But it, uh, in addition to being able to take calls with it, it really was just a sensitive touchpad so you can tap it and then talk to Motorola Assistant or what would then be, uh, become the Google Assistant. And when I was trying it, it really was one of those things where I kind of wish that I didn't, I kind of, I kind of wish that I didn't, I wasn't a human being <laughs> because human beings like have earwax and the idea of have, wearing this thing every single day and having to clean it like every day or something because to make sure it doesn't look quite so nasty because it was super convenient to just be taking your constitutional and have still having like you're not having your 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 ear your sound field cut off by headphones but still be able to tap and say what well, when is uh, when is my sister's birthday because I'm passing by a floral shop I don't know I want to make sure it comes on the 20th and not the 22nd uh, and then just get these incidental things that little bits of information information that smooth your day or little taking little notes without having the cost of having to divert your attention to looking at a phone uh, or even be wearing these uh, these stereo headphones all the time. It's a great idea and I hope that other companies pursue it. I'm surprised my that neck hurts nest because like when I look at the screen my head's down and it, it starts to hurt after a while when I'm walking and now with the AirPods or others I just leave my head up phones in my pocket and I feel so much better. I, I'm, I'm surprised that Apple hasn't bought a company like Phonak like just just bought the whole company. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're a hearing aid company, a yeah, it, very high-end uh, hearing aid company. Yeah, we use them in broadcast, the wireless ones. Cause yeah. they're the, the, what you see them in, in um, like, 24, like Jack Bauer puts them in his ear. Now, they don't <laughs> work for miles. They work for 100 feet in studios. But but um, they're so good. Yeah. And you just feel like, you know, they're, they're, they're not stereo. They're not, like, music quality. <clears throat> but, but when you think about the, what they've gotten really good at is being able to isolate you know, uh, all that stuff and, and actually improve that. And if, and if you look at the, the audience, the audience that Apple continues to look at is, um, many of us that are aging, um, that, uh, uh, you know, are going to need, um, are going to need, you need to have augmented hearing. I think that there is a massive market. If you look at the health market in general for Apple to get into the kind of the, I think that Apple's going to move towards a, towards a hearing aid that is not a hearing aid. You know, they make it cool. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be an insert that, you can hear better than you normally than you ever did, as well as have music, as well as have assistant, as well as have, and, and it'll be certified, and you know all those other things. But Phonex probably the the leading the leading one. They do everything from hearing aids to security to intelligence to I mean they have a lot. They actually have whole different websites. If you if you look at it, there's whole different websites for the different industries yeah. you know that they cover. Yeah. Um. And so uh, like you would if you go to the Phonex one, all you see is hearing aids, but you, there's a whole other one that's all entertainment. And there's a whole other one that's all you know, interesting. defense. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the wrong products, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see what uh, government services. So go to the yeah. government services page, hearing instruments, wireless accessories. Yeah. Those, Those are the are little bottom ones are just the ones that just sit in the ear. The nice thing about the ones uh, that are more hearing aid like, I actually have Starkeys, which look very similar is that you can have a lot more room for the battery that goes behind the ear. And then there's just a little implement in your ear, a little floating little speaker. Um, Apple has been served with a warrant to unlock the Texas shooter's phone. Turns out to be an iPhone SE. Blood spattered iPhone SE. Apple has yet to officially respond to the warrant from the Texas Rangers. That's a, a, an encrypted phone. Which, which an encrypted phone which they sent back to Quantico without doing anything with it. So they said, yeah, like, they didn't put it on his finger right. or, well, you kind of understand them doing that. Anyway, uh, um, the real question I bet is if this warrant covers just the phone or I'm suspecting it covers the iCloud backup as well. 
And uh, that would be, of course, where you would find the data if you're really looking for something. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is about this case. I think that, uh, remember, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a, a deputy attorney general on a, in a uh, address was pretty much calling out Apple particularly uh, and sending signals, if not saying outright, that they were looking for something to make a test case out of yeah. to say that, look, you do not have the right to conceal a, a uh, to conceal a secret from the government and that if you are manufacturing technology that allows people to, to conceal a secret from the government, you must have a back door in there. And I, even, I think he even made the, the use the statement. I'm probably paraphrasing here that no ra that no rational person would deny that the law enforcement has a right to the data inside a phone. It's like, yeah, me. <laughs> I thought maybe I'm not rational, but I'll, well, and I'll I think say no, you don't. What undermined, what really undermines the argument is the NSA leaks mixed with the fact that the San right. Bernardino uh, bon yeah. uh, shooters had no data. Like after they actually broke it in, yeah, there was they nothing got into there. It for a million dollars, and there, there was, was nothing a, there. And you know, although NSA in this has proven case, they can't in even the, keep in their the Texas own case, uh, he, he, we know at least he called his father. We believe he also might have called other people from that phone, those call logs. But they can get that from the phone company. So I'm not sure what. I don't know. Yeah, we're, all, we're also we also we also can't gloss over the fact that Apple is willing to help law enforcement above t up until almost the very very end of their abilities, and the only thing they're not willing to do is do something that they feel compromises the security every of phone. every iPhone every phone. everywhere. Right, and they are particularly as Alex said, the all these tools that they if the NSA has them, other people are going to have them, and if they allow if they create either a tool or if they create a vulnerability in iOS that allows a backdoor for law enforcement somebody's going to have that well, and it's not just and it's not just going to be uh, you know, people and uh, people trying to get your phone numbers getting your banking information well, we're talking about hey let's we're talking about a foreign uh, government trying to say it would be very very useful for us to get access to the secretary an assistant to the secretary of the treasury's phone uh, so we know this we will just use this this $200,000 vulnerability we bought to make sure that we can remotely get into this thing and take a look at his call history. It's like that's the sort of that's the level of the threat that is presented when if Apple were to say, yes, we will weaken iOS to make sure that we can uh, find out what was inside the head and the phone of a of a uh, horrible killer who decided to kill themselves or get killed. Well, so I, I, I correct myself. The warrant was f was for iCloud content. Then there was a more general warrant issued separately to allow law enforcement to access the phone. So there, there were uh, two warrants. Well, and, and it seems like they're, they're, they're going to have to get to a point where law enforcement is trained on how to take care of, yeah. you know, how to manage phones. You know, if, they, if this is so important to them, it seems like in, in both cases, San Bernardino you know, and this shooting, you had law enforcement making mistakes that probably locked up the, the content. And so, uh, you know, this is something that they need to have a little tech training on on how to make sure that at least they did all the things that they need to do um i think that uh again all these viruses that shut down subways and hospitals and businesses all over russia and europe and even possibly uh coffee shops here those were all nsa hack tools you know that got out into the open and and then they you know they're used against us and they and and if you want to see how bad it can get you can look at look at those hacks and see, ask steve, see what happens uh, after the show steve gibson security now yeah. is uh, coming up because he has last week he asserted something and I, and I need to get clarity in what he was saying but he said he did believe maybe it isn't for this phone but in future that'd be possible for apple to unlock an individual phone without risking compromise of other phones that it's possible that that Apple, I, I think the idea would be Apple could push a firmware update to that one phone with a, that would uh, release the key that's stored on that phone in order to unencrypt the data on that phone. And that technique, while it could later be applied by, uh, you know, uh, to other phones, wouldn't necessarily provide a tool that would unlock other phones. But, of course, Apple's concern would not merely be that it would leak out, hackers would get it, but that China would come to it or some other country would go or Erdogan would come to them and and say, "Hey, by the way, I know you have this tool now. Would you please unlock this well, dissident?" I think, I think the, the, the United States is the least in their worries. It's it's the other countries that as right. soon as they open that door, and I think that Apple is is they're not trying so to build any problems. back door. They're trying to there's make it impossible. There's two problems. One is one is the problem that there would be a tool that would unencrypt phones that would leak to bad guys. But the other is that they would show an ability that they don't want to show foreign governments to well, and i think that every time the individual phone i think every time they find an, that ability they find a way to code around code it out of the system i mean i think that apple's not i mean I yeah, think exactly they, i think they're they are actively every os update that we're getting is closing gaps you know and i think that the problem is they have to rush that down that path because eventually they may end up with a government that says 
you have to do X, Y, and Z, but it's already out. Like every time Apple already releases it, it becomes harder and harder for right. a government to ask for it. So they, I think that that's a huge push for them, is to just keep on driving out every respect, every every access that they would have. It's also our governments too have been caught doing things that aren't exactly legal or hiding all sorts of requests under FISA and similar. Depending but, but on what your country I is. But then I understand why the deputy director of the FBI, Rod Rosenstein, would say Apple is working actively working against us. They're actively trying to make the data unaccessible to us. And we can, he said it's actually going to cost lives. And I can understand, I mean, putting, well, it, my, it, it, putting my FBI deputy director yeah. hat on, I could see why that would be upsetting. Because they are, I mean, doesn't it, it look like that? They're actively it, working to make it impossible. Well, the thing, the thing, the the thing that we grownups have to acknowledge is that yes, it is going. Yes, it is going to cost lives. The ability of bad people to have communications beyond the eyes of any oversight seeing agency that is going to cost lives. But that's the same reason why. Again, uh, having the Fourth Amendment is going to cost lives. Having the First Amendment is going to cost lives. We just make a decision as as a society that there is amount, uh, an amount of reasonable risk we're willing to undergo in order per to, to protect a larger freedom. Um, this is why the rule of law is not, well, if you've got nothing to hide, then why can't we see it? That's not the rule of law. The rule of law is that if you have personal information, the government has to go through hoops in order to force you to give that information up. But the the big difference in this generation is that they have never never ever ever been uh, been confronted by technology that is almost as effective as writing something down on a piece of paper and throwing it into a fire and that's what this level of encryption is like and once you once law enforcement is faced with that that someone can have useful information that cannot possibly be broken out of a safe uh, or uh, decrypted or uh, on their on their own. Now you've got to. Well, we didn't have to fight for this right for law enforcement to have the right to access any piece of information being transacted anywhere in the country. But now we feel as though we have to ask for that right, and it's up to us as citizens to say no. You do not have that right. And to take it, I mean, it. it sounds like science fiction, but to take it a step further, we'll be at a point soon where we have machine learning predicting crimes and we'll have implants uh, that are deeply connected to us. And eventually the brains are just electrical data. We'll be able to read stuff on there. And we've up until now considered thought to be sacrosanct. And you could argue that a smartphone is the closest thing we have right now to actual bionics, where it's an extension of our brain and it retains information that we're just no longer capable of retaining, like contacts and all these different things. And how far does our right against self-incrimination go? Should this be considered privileged? And not accept and not accessible. And to Andy's point, as a society, we have to we're going to have to start grappling with all these with all these rules. It's not just Minority Report. I mean, the, the I, I was joking around with my god kid the other day, saying, "Do you want to watch Knight Rider?" He said, "What is it?" I said, "It's a car that talks, like Siri. No, it drives itself, like <laughs> Tesla." And my childhood <laughs> is his reality. And very soon, all those science fiction movies about very intrusive, uh, you know, co government surveillance and, and, and a biological level are going to be true. Well, and I'd, it would behoove us to figure it out. A lot of the. A lot of the government surveillance is already available. I mean, it's it's they're pretty good at what they do. So, I mean, I think that, you know, we need to understand that, you know, the, the, the thing that is probably more valuable to the government that we did turn off was metadata. You know, being able to 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 mass uh, collect metadata, even when you don't need it, um, is incredible, is probably way more valuable than anything on a phone. And because it means that you can go back in time and see someone. See someone, see someone become a terrorist. Yeah. That is before yeah. someone told them to strip their phone. Right. Because you can interconnect all of that. So who was they, who were they talking to when they got the new phone? That kind of thing um, is, you know, that is the, the stuff that um, is more, much that, more valuable. That was the conclusion. I, you remember the, uh, uh, was it an MIT study called Going Dark? That was the conclusion uh, a lot of experts, a lot of law enforcement, but uh, security experts uh, got together to write this paper. It said the means, the, the abilities for law enforcement to collect data has improved at a greater rate than the means to hide data. Mm -hmm. And in fact, law enforcement has more than ample data. That the, the, the concern about going dark is overstated. It's hard. <laughs> Our show today brought to you, we're going to take a break, come back, talk about uh, lots more, including... Apple's geniuses who are straining under the load of iPhone's success. It's a burden for them. And what <laughs> Apple's doing about it, including opening the new store, we got to make a field trip down to Burlingame, see that new Apple store with the new look Apple store. Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy cloud accounting software that's used by over 10 million people. I used it for years. It started for me in making invoices, and that's really kind of the first step 
into the FreshBooks universe. It, it makes it very easy to create professional-looking invoices that get you paid faster. Faster because, well, the longer you put off doing the invoice chore, the longer it's going to take to get paid. But also, because those invoices make it easy for your clients to pay, they tend to pay, on average, 11 days faster. Plus, it turns out, you know, if you're doing invoices, you're doing expense receipts, you're counting hours, you're actually doing a bunch of the work accounting needs without doing any accounting. So the FreshBooks and that new dashboard can tell you, are you making a profit? You could see your spending, your outstanding balances. You get all those kind of in the process of doing invoices alone. Plus, FreshBooks invoices have all sorts of nice features, like you can reward propped clients and encourage customer loyalty by adding discounts to recurring templates. You can have recurring invoices. You can have automated invoices. You can have automated payment if your client agrees. It's all in there. With FreshBooks, of course, you can bill for time by client, but also by project. And if the FreshBooks app and the FreshBooks website have timers there. You can assign services to projects, designate different rates for each service. All you do, you press play, you track your time to the minute. The time entries are sorted chronologically on the invoice. Automatically, they're imported right in, and you can even add future unbilled time entries to your recurring templates so you don't miss a minute. Of course, all your expenses are in there, too. You take a picture of the receipt with your app on the phone, and it'll automatically put it in the invoice or keep track of it. You can see the receipt attachments when you view invoices in the iOS app. Employees can log into the FreshBooks mobile app for iOS, which makes it easy for them to help your business taking care of it wherever they are. I just, I can go on and on. I tell you what, go to freshbooks.com slash MacBreak and try it free for 30 days. Great help. Uh, great support, too, from the, some of the best support people in the world. Right up there in beautiful Toronto. It's no wonder FreshBooks was included in the Forbes Small Giants list for 2017. I used it for a long time, and I think you might want to try this. It is incredible. Freshbooks.com slash MacBreak. It just If you do me a favor, put Mac Break Weekly in the How Did You Hear About Us section so that they know how they how you heard about us, right? FreshBooks.com slash Mac Break. Apple geniuses straining under the iPhone's success. <laughs> but it's true. If you ever go into yeah. an Apple store, it is so crowded in there. I have two, I have two iPads that my, my kids... Um, locked themselves out of by trying to put the wrong code in and i'm just like i always go oh i gotta take that in and get it fixed and and then i'm just like oh, i don't have time to wait in line for 45 minutes <laughs> so whatever. one way to solve this apple's redesigning its uh, stores the chicago store featured a massive revamp including bigger spaces with sweeping balconies and leather seating have you, balls have you, have you been to the chicago store no i have been to the chicago store how are those leather balls they <laughs> comfy <laughs> That, and, was, that was that was hard. Uh, it was they are yeah. it, the it's Chicago like Union store Square, I think, right? The Chicago the, store they is have a grove amazing, now, right? But the grove, even the grove, is changing. I guess the new Burlingame store. The, by the way, the, the the best part. I mean, there's so many great things about the Chicago store, but the monitor, the 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 the, the wall. Yeah, I, we deal with LED walls a lot, so I'm I'm a I'm a connoisseur of LED walls, and <laughs> I literally. It was the nicest LED wall I've ever seen. Like I got my head up to it and looked up sideways. And I was looking for like what, where are the components? And it's like this. the one at Apple Park is really nice too. Oh my. yeah, we'll I haven't, I haven't been to that one. Yet. They're they probably opened, the same. They're probably the same ones. And I, yeah. I it was stunning. They, they opened stunning. the visitor center, which is cool. So here is, this is a small story. This is not a big story. This is in Burlingame, California, and I guess Burlington, Vermont, got one of this new. It's kind of monolithic, kind of a cube. Yeah, the new mm, design, kind of brutalist. Yeah, brutalist is right. Yeah, look at that. Uh, but there's still that glass. By the way, they are getting a new uh, painted glass for the Brooklyn uh, Mac store. That yeah, giant quickly, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> it's really yeah. ugly. Johnny Ives, dang it, whoever, hurts whoever, whoever my dropped head. That, whoever dropped that is big. big it's trouble. hurting my head. Um, this doesn't look that different. I guess this is uh, iPhone 10 day. Yeah, it's, it's it's too bad. I went to. I was. I happened to be close to. Uh, Apple, the very first Apple store uh, in uh, Towers Corner, Virginia, uh, last week. So I decided to visit Apple oh, Store zero 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 one, and I was kind of disappointed that there was nothing. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to be a special store, but there should be at least something there to say. Oh, by the way, this, this was spot. the first show. This was the first store ever app open yeah. to the public, and so it's 
I, and I, I appreciate that this isn't uh, this isn't uh, like the Chicago store. This isn't like the New York City store. It's not like designed to be. This is one of the big landmarks uh, of the entire chain. They have to have a design they can fit in every single mall that they need to put something into. But it is kind of disappointing that if really if you've uh, it really was no different from the Apple store that I was in in my hometown just the night before I left. Um, although you, you and you can see just like we're talking about how. It's okay. Ship first and then adjust as you go. You can definitely see the difference between uh, now that there there is not a counter in the back with the genius logo above it. Really, the entire store is it's a genius, genius bar. Yeah, and off if off to the sides there are iPhone cases that you can buy. So you right. just simply take a seat and then they they bring your genius to your seat uh, <laughs> as as you go. It's it's. I really, had that experience uh, last time as an Apple store, and that was nice. That was cool. Yeah. you still have to make an appointment though, right? Yeah, still you, you still should make an appointment, yeah. but it's it's also they're also wide. They used to be like deep, and now they're wider than they are deep because people. It's just the the entrance will just get completely clogged with people. It's like a, it's like a progress bar, like sort of anti progress progress bar of how many people are waiting for the genius bar because it'll be dense people, and then they'll start filling to the front of the store as people keep waiting. So you definitely see the success of the Apple Store in the redesign. It's very expensive to visit an Apple store for me. I always get in there. I'm always like, <laughs> oh, look at that. I didn't know that. that. I'll, I'll say, I'll, two, I'll say my, and, and next thing I know, I've bought yeah. like it, it, The we, two places that I, I have to be careful about is uh, Apple stores and B&H. Yeah. B&H yes. photo. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. B&H no, is much been, worse than Apple, but but it's they're both similar. We have we have defined what a unit of Alex is uh, for money. I've I've I I from here on forth, I just I have determined that if, that fifty dollars is a unit of Renee. Because when I was in the app, when I was in that Apple store last week, I couldn't help but look at that big rack of like Apple bands and just walk yes. walk over there to see is there something that I don't have if there's something I don't I'm not I'm not, I'm not collecting these bands I only have two or three of them but I got to say that I saw one last week that turned out to be a limited leather edition that I kind of liked so I yeah I kind of just like when I was like you know 19 years old collecting action figures well I'm, I'm in toys I'm in I'm near Toys R Us anyway let's just yep. see if they have the limited edition stormtrooper figure that has a removable head that turns into <laughs> turns into Han Solo. This is the uh, visitor center. It opened a couple of weeks ago. You can now go if you're in Cupertino, California, and see it. That is uh, the roof looks like it's floating. It's a cantilever design. They like those all glass uh, walls, don't they? In curved corners. Yeah. Like so someone who uh, curved corners are, are so hard to do in glass. They're, they're just showing off at that point. Yeah. They're just. Yes. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah, yeah. Can do that. What no else problem. would you like? It's architecture uh, porn, basically. Uh, yeah. Here's a, a 3D model of uh, Apple Park, so you can uh, even use augmented reality. See the people holding up iPads? We so. got to try that. That's wild. They have like, these special iPads that are monogrammed with the Apple Park uh, symbol, the ring on the back of them. And you, they have a bunch of Apple technicians around to help you with it. And you hold it up, and you see the ring, and then like the roof floats up off of uh, it and you can turn around and start looking down and uh, around inside it that's nice that's oh god nice. it reminds me of every school field trip when i was a little kid when you go to the yes. science museum and there's a diorama where you push the button and then suddenly the part of the settlement that has the fish racks drying lights up and the voice says meanwhile these fish waddles were used to both track fish and also hang them for drying for the coming seasons the, uh, and the, I don't know if you can see it there, but they have a wall with Hermes, and then just the Hermes watches. That's sort of the Hermes put up wall. On them. It looks yeah, like that, and yeah. oh, that's my kryptonite. Uh, uh, the shirts are red, at least in the Apple Store. They're all red shirts. Hmm. I don't know what that. No, means. They're, 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 I think I think Holidays. that's I think they that's changed. just the color du jour. They yeah, were yeah. they were red in the uh, uh, in the Tyson's Corner Mall yeah. store last week. Too. Yeah, they bring out the holiday shirts. Red and they right have now. pins. Yeah. They've been giving them pins like they did at WWDC, which are really cool. Oh, it's easier neat. to find them. Here's uh, the outside part. That's pretty. Or is it inside yeah. with glass? I don't know. It feels outside. <laughs> That's very pretty. It's uh, open. Cafe, inside your head, a... Leo. It's, <laughs> don't let them inside your head. 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through so Friday, pretty. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go on down, ladies and gentlemen, the new visitor center. But now you, uh, you've been there, Renee. Can you see... Yep. You can't see this the, the 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 spaceship campus from there though, can you? There's an observation deck upstairs that oh. you can walk up, and I believe I'm a little bit because I walked around there and it was an event, so it was crazy. But I believe right. you can see it from the observation level, and uh, but it's a ways off. Like it's a good walk away from where right. you're nowhere near the ring. Right, you can't really get to. The you're not even on Apple Park Way. You're on Tantau uh, Tantau Drive when you go into the visitor section. Tan Tan Drive. Tantau. Is it a little bit warmer there? <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, Time Magazine's top ten gadgets of 2016. I'm sorry, 2017. Uh, Apple's in there actually. Uh, Apple's close, but not quite at the top, which kind of surprised me. Number two 
the iPhone 10, the Apple Watch appears in the list. But what do you think? The number one, according to Time Magazine, gadget of 2017 is... The new Lego Millennium Falcon. Exactly right. No, it's the Nintendo oh, Switch. No. Uh, I, won't, I won't argue Would that you, one. That's a, that's, it's pretty cool. But I don't know. Yeah. I think the 10 really... Well, I mean, the Nintendo Switch is so, like it's got issues like that screen is is plasticky and right. not very scribed, but it is just so much fun. It, it is, is so much fun. Amazing. I've not allowed myself to buy one because I would never be seen by humanity again. Yeah, if I bought one. yeah. Right. Fortunately, my son took mine. Microsoft Surface Laptop in there at number three. The DJI Spark. Yeah, yeah. That's I think the Spark. I, I I don't I don't think that should have been put in there. No, we like yeah. the Mavic Pro. You and me. Well, the problem is the Spark. The the, the arms don't fold. Like like. But that's all I gotta say. Alex I mean, it's is gonna sort of, walk over there right now. No, no, it's like it's like I, I was all excited about buying a Spark, and then they, and they're like, I was like, what are the what are the big advantages of the of the of the Mavic? And the guy goes, well, you can fold the arms. I'm like, you can't fold the arms on the Spark, and, and that was I it. love that, that I can the fold end. the arms. I my Mavic I know you throw is it so in your backpack. compact. Yeah. I you don't love it. it. I, I throw it in my backpack all the time. Yeah, I got I, I got to say that this is this this is this week is the start of Black Friday week, which means it's the start of my actually setting watch alarms to make sure that I tweet yeah. out like uh, links to things that I have bought previously on Amazon that I could recommend because they're on sale uh, and knowing that 90 days later for my affiliate links you know, for not I use I use uh, Amazon affiliate links for things that are not tech related that are not you know part of my job as a reporter and as a, as a journalist but for things like you know sous vide cookers and and movies and books and things like that and I always make a little like Santa's literally a little Santa's list of things that I would never buy with real money but I would buy with like the money that I get from all the shopping that gets done during the Christmas season and I kind of want a folding Mavic drone. <laughs> it's like I, I, I can't I can't possibly justify it. I just want a flying Aww. camera drone that folds up that I can it's put inside so my cool. bag. It's so I know fun. it's so cool. I so got if you, it you, so you. if you buy the, if you yes. buy the Mel Brooks DVD collection for twenty uh, Blu-ray collection for twenty dollars, you're helping me get the power to annoy the hell out of my my neighbors and scare their cats. Well, the, the, and, and there's little things you, like at my house. I was like, I wonder what's over on the other side of that hill. So I just. <laughs> my I just got my Mavic out and just flew up over the hill to see what see what's on the other side. I was just like, isn't, isn't that, that isn't that isn't that fun? It's one yeah. of the fun things to do with it. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if there are any code violations to that porch that my my neighbor is putting up. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, let's see. All right. I guess we got to talk now about uh, this, and this is this is just uh, breaking news this morning. Uh, the FCC. Uh, unveiled their plan uh, to eliminate net neutrality. Uh, this is the Washington Post. Uh, federal regulators unveiled a plan that would give Internet providers broad powers to determine what websites and online cust uh, services their customers can see and use and at what cost. Now, this isn't law yet. It sets the stage for a vote next month. Ajit Pai, the chairman of the FCC, uh, said that uh, we're going to stop micromanaging the Internet I might not characterize it as my. Did it have a pro sponsored by Verizon logo on yeah. the bill? Like, is it? Is it yeah, they might as well. I, I don't. So I, I, I think they're probably going to vote it through, and I think it's going to be December fourteenth. It's expected to pass. I mean, Republicans control three of the commission's five seats. They have a majority. Right. Um, I'm going to lay out a prediction that if it passes, I don't think it's going to turn out as well for Verizon, Comcast, and AT and T as they think it will. I think they're excited about it. I think that, but what, what I think this will do when they stick it, when they stick, they open this up is it's going to worry people like Apple, people like Google, people like Facebook, and suddenly you, they're going to get competition from areas that they can't afford to fight. You know, and I think that, I hope that's the case. I know. I think, I don't, cause I think they're not going to put up with it. I think they're going to go, you know, the people are going to be like, you know, especially Google has spent a lot of time figuring stuff out, you know, and, and I think that, um, I, I think that they're going to wish when this all, when the dust settles 10 years from now, AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast, this may kill them. Like right. that, that's the, you know, like, right. I think that this actually may, may actually be the thing that unwinds. Well, them. if they take advantage of this and do things like say, well, we're going to block Skype because we have our own VoIP service then. And by the way, you will know that besides the fact that Skype will stop working, you will know that because uh, the, one of the rules requires transparency. They do have to post on a, clearly visible website what they're blocking what they're prioritizing what they're doing so there's they're not supposed to do this in secret one issue there is that they're moving uh, uh, enforcement of this from the fcc to the ftc which enforces many many other trade rules and is uh, by, uh, by some measures uh, overburdened already so yeah. i'm not sure how enforcement will uh, look that's but essentially yeah, that's, you're gonna you're gonna 
let the internet service what providers I, what I'd love to regulate see is, themselves what as I, long as they are honest about what it. What I'd love to see, the, the only thing that I think is missing, and I haven't read this, so maybe it's not missing, but I think they ought to um, basically take off all the all the fettering that they've done to the local governments and say, okay, look, if if we're going we're gonna to take all these rules away and you guys can charge whatever you want, but local governments are now allowed to compete. No, they're not doing that. And I and, yeah. and that's another thing, by the way, that Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T are shutting down local governments everywhere from competing with them. So... But I think that yeah, what, they what this both does, want an, a, a non-competitive environment and to be able to set the rules they but, want. But I think that I think that the problem they're going to have is that that those people are going to if they start getting clamped down and they start seeing that they're being that their traffic is being shaped, I think you're going to end up with a lot more groundswell to for for people to work with and maybe it's working with Google, maybe it's working with Apple or whatever to 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 push these guys out. You know, I, I think that they, you know, they, I, I think it's going to be more, much more complicated than they. Than I they love Tom is. Wheeler's yeah, response. He said, if you like your cable company, you'll love what this does for the Internet. <laughs> he says right. it's tragic. The job of the FCC is to represent the consumer. Tragically, this decision is only for the benefit of the largely monopoly services that deliver the Internet oh, to the Lord. consumer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 going to be tough. It's, it's, there are already organizations that are lined up to sue to prevent them from doing this, from taking this action. I feel as though they're going to get a lot of help from a lot of wealthy companies in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and they'll also have a lot of there, there are people who have uh, pol political firepower uh, backing up that money. That's going to make you don't. The, the 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 sad fact is that the reason why despots get get into trouble is that when they make it difficult for rich people inside their countries to continue to make lots and lots of money. Uh, and so, if you were trying to, if you're threatening Google, if you're threatening Apple, if you're threatening Netflix, I'm uh, actually more Google, Apple, and, and Facebook. If you're threatening these companies with uh, the ability to make unfettered profits, they're going to start uh, aiming the money cannon at people who can really, the, really hurt the you. That's going to be a bad thing. And well, and 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 also. I think this is more a problem of less of them turning off Skype so much as well. Great, now we can pe charge people extra for Skype, for right, Skype and that's right. just as good for them. Right. I think that zero the, rate competitors. Right. I, I think the hard part is is that it won't really hurt Apple or Facebook or Google because they they'll be able to afford it. In fact, it cuts out some some of their competition. But I think that there's an opportunity for from a marketing perspective for Apple, Facebook, and Google, and a couple other ones to build a consortium and maybe even build a Hulu style ISP that is, you know, all of these companies that are against it and saying, okay, here's the deal. We've got a trillion dollars in cash and we're going to pound you into the ground if you go any, you know, and, and it's a good marketing for them. I, I'm just going to say it's not good business. There's lots of great roadblocks. Marketing. There's lots of roadblocks. Well, there's, there's an infrastructure roadblock. I mean, there's, you know, cities no, it's, who it's, it's, but it, offer you monopolies. Don't, just, so you don't have to, I, you, I you don't have to, you don't have to compete in every city to crush at and Verizon. You have to compete in the top 20. Right. You take the top 20 markets and you, and, and you attack those. You take those away and they're done. Like it's just too many people. It's too many subscribers and that's where all the easy, you know, all, and that's where it's easy for well, you I to do it. Respond, a, but that but that's, but well, a, if the, you know, the, the right thing to do for Apple and Google and Facebook and all these, and Amazon and Microsoft to take the top five and if they build a consortium and say, we're going to spend real money in the top 20 markets because we disagree with this, this will get real ugly real fast for the incumbents, you know, because they, yeah. because they're going to have a lot of people backing it and a lot of people who are online, a lot of people that are online vocally. You know, I think that there, there is a huge opportunity to have the government, you know, have, I mean, to pummel these guys for doing this. Yeah, I, well, I do. I do think that this does affect companies like Apple and Facebook and Google directly, because all of the technologies that they've come out are increasingly eating a lot more bandwidth. Like here is Apple Music; we're going to be able to stream at high velocities. Here is 4K video that we want to be able to push out. Here is 4K streaming. Uh, here is 4K chat, and, and even uh, eight standard HD chat. All of this is based on the idea that if whatever, whenever people have access to the internet, the fact that they are fire hosing data cost them about as much money as they would if they were just simply squirt gunning uh, data out there. So the next time that uh, students go to hang out at Starbucks or at a coffee shop and suddenly they realize that the uh, that the, the router installed at Starbucks has been decided to turn off access to FaceTime because they can't afford what their ISP is going to charge the coffee shop to offer free fa uh, free internet, uh, free Wi-Fi for that service. That's when it's uh, that's when you start interfering with Apple's ability to make money. Uh, they're also, I think, that in a position where they just have to, they're 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 just fundamentally hating this. 
And this is fun. They, I think they believe fundamentally this is wrong for the incre for the ability of technology to find its own level, to find its own level of greatness. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it could possibly get, but I don't think it's going to be uh, I don't think it's going to be good at all. And we can't we're not going to find out for another year or two. FCC is also well, ordering states uh, to scrap plans. Remember, the states were going to come up with their own net neutrality plans here in California. That was a. Uh, 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 in play, but they are going to say this law, fe uh, Fed law, preempts yours. Uh, and uh, some have pointed out that the uh, this the, the the sunshine rules, the transparency rules, will work as well as they do for privacy. Yes, yeah, FTC totally. does require privacy statements, but it doesn't mean companies can't do anything they want. In fact, they so, do. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm most worried not about to Apple and Google. I hope that Apple and Google weigh in. I think in the long run. It's good for their business and they won't because it's good for YouTube. But what it does is it tilts the playing field, let's say, more towards YouTube because Google can afford to pay those bandwidth costs. And away from companies like Twit and, and other up-and-coming companies, innovators, who will be disadvantaged. The playing field's already tilted in YouTube's favor. It's going to be tilted more in YouTube's favor. And I could say just personally, this is going to, if this goes, you know, lives up to its full potential, could disadvantage us. Seriously, this totally, advantage. Totally. And I mean, so I'm usually a huge optimist about this kind of stuff, but I find it hard to be optimistic because uh, Apple has not been very vocal about net neutrality. Google has waffled on net neutrality. Facebook gives me the sense that they would love to just pay to zero rate all their services yeah. at the expense of the competition that they? you mentioned. Totally. I mean, that, that I, I believe there's, you know, that's that's top of their list. Um, and they these companies could have spoken out. This has been years in the making and they've been relatively quiet and they could have wielded their money and their influence for a decade before we got anywhere near this point. And coming at it from behind is is, is a lot of work. And I think exactly what you said, Leo, this is just detrimental to anybody else who wants to get in the field. And that's the exact opposite of what the whole utilities thing is supposed to do yeah, to begin if, with. If you've enjoyed a, a rich, vibrant podcast uh, ecosystem, which we have up till now, one thing you've already noticed is that the big players are starting to suck the air uh, out of the room and it's just going to get worse. And you're not going to see those diverse uh, podcasts that you used to see. You're not going to see uh, anywhere near the kind of diversity you used to see. And I think that that's just what's going to happen. If you want to stream video, you'll stream it on YouTube or Facebook because they'll be zero rated. And you won't do it yourself because that would be nuts. Well, you can look at, you know, T-Mobile has their, yeah. you know, their whole thing where you're, right. basically there's a whole bunch of partners that are, and that's been always this kind of gray area of... Um, yeah, there's zero rating. FCC mm -hmm. has always considered that to be uh, antithetic to net neutrality. I think consumers don't really understand why not charging them for bandwidth for some mm -hmm. players, but charging them for others is not net neutrality. I think they have a harder time understanding it because it looks right. like you're saving money. And I think we'll see a lot of that too. And I think that's going to be what's it confusing will. for consumers is they're going to be like, whoa, I don't have to, I no longer have to pay for I, like anything YouTube I watch on bandwidth. It. I think what, what you may see, I mean, this is the, the, the unfortunate thing is I think that get back to Mac break. I don't, you know, Apple can afford to say, hey, we're going to pay AT&T, Verizon, and whatever, some ungodly amount to make sure that you never get slowed down ever on watching your Apple TV. Because I know that, you right. know, that you know, and, and that's the They've that already done that, that with Netflix. Yeah. They, yeah. Totally. You know? yeah. Well, Netflix already does it. Yeah, all the... No, net, but Apple does it for Netflix. They put Netflix on Akamai. Right. I mean, that's a huge cost to Apple. But right. it means the best Netflix experience is on Apple TV. Right. Uh, yeah, this is very disappointing news. There are perhaps some bright lights. Uh, Congress has said this. Maybe we want to weigh in here, and, mm -hmm. and Congress could overrule the FCC. The FCC can only do what Congress lets it do. And uh, some have said the courts are not going to let this happen. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure there will be a court challenge, uh, and we'll see if the courts say yes or no to this. Go ahead, Renee. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I said my. I think, it, <laughs> I think it. I think it opens up the. It'll. I think it could also open up the conversation about whether we should make uh, the ISPs utilities. You know, I think if people get upset about it, if they go down too far, if they move too quickly down this path, um, you know, they could end up with a lot more regulation than than what they have now. Because that's, I think that I think it's a valid point that they should be. We just have such short attention span these days. We, any, things that used to be a huge nation moving crisis, we yeah, just but they forget get, about. Well, there are also minutes. many more hair on fire moments than there used yeah. to be. Yeah, so yeah. that's what I have to say. We, we have a lot more to pay attention to. When the I, when the iPhone 3G launched, Canada took to the streets to because we used to pay a hundred dollars for two hundred megabytes of data, and we took to the streets and said, "This is not right. We're you know we're not going to be treated like a data dev." I, and it was one of the few times that Canadians actually bothered to get off their couches and do something, well, and it worked. But I think if it happened now, we'd be like, "Oh, this is really terrible." Well, Oh, my God. Who did what on Twitter? Well, but I think that the issue is, is that <laughs> there's so many of us using so much data 
that that and it's not hard to organize now it's easier now than ever um you know i think that i mean that's what shot down a lot of this in the past is um sopa and so on and so forth was that people can organize very fast and um and do a lot you know it, it can the groundswell can get intense i hope so uh and in a related story uh china doesn't have any net neutrality they also don't have skype uh, right. Yeah. Skype has been removed from app stores on both Windows and uh, and Apple, and uh, it's harder and harder to get. You'd have to get it kind of through a back channel if you wanted to. Are they still it. removing VPN next year? Yep. All yeah, VPN apps are going away. Although uh, there, that doesn't mean VPNs are going away. It just means you can't use the apps. You anymore. have to get an enterprise distribution or yeah. compile it yourself in Xcode. There you go. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Which is not. I mean, that's, that's not a that's not a easy thing for most people to do. Right. Right. Uh, but if you're motivated. How does that work in like, you know, a VPN is like built into the Mac OS. Right. How do they? So it's this, an extension that's... service in iOS. It's so like... there's, there's four or five different VPN extensions. So basically you compile an app and it offers a VPN extension service to the system. Mm -hmm. And then it'll just run like an extension. Russia's right. also eliminating VPNs. It's, uh, but they've know. increased the amount that you can just, like previously it was very few that you could distribute over enterprise. Now the it's voluminous. You can right. put many, many um, versions of the app out that way. So on a bright note, Let's cheer people up. Black Friday is <laughs> coming around the corner. Yes. Apple not historically a great Black Friday kind of place. Are there going to be some Black Friday deals uh, on Friday? Oh, yeah. I mean, not from I mean, Apple itself will probably give you a you know a firm handshake and a, a and small a gift card. Gift card. For yeah. a very few of your... Uh, <laughs> but there are other resellers that looks like like the Targets and the and the Best Buys and stuff. There, there are certain products that, you know, like iPhone 10, you're not going to get it for half off. I know like there's some... There's but some I, like but, that, but we were are, talking today on iOS Today. Walmart's offering a $300 gift card with an iPhone 10 purchase. If yeah. You, if you buy stuff cards, at Walmart, get, that's, a, that's $300 off. And there's good uh, Apple Watch deals from a lot of providers. It can be much cheaper than they usually are. There's going to be a lot of, if you if you don't mind shopping around, there'll be a lot of really good stuff, just yeah. not at the Apple store. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> that wasn't also, that. Internet of Things, if you want your home kit and your health kit stuff, there'll be a lot of really good stuff. wasn't as cheerful stuff. as I was hoping. <laughs> 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 you know what will cheer me up? Your picks of the week. Gentlemen, prepare them. Uh, they're coming up right after this word from our sponsor, Jamf, J-A-M-F. You know Jamf if you are in IT and you manage Macs. But did you know about their new Jamf Now platform? It's an on-demand mobile device management solution for Apple devices. Makes it so much easier to keep track of all your Apple devices at work, secure the lost iPads, uh, automatically deploy from, uh, from your central location apps, view device details, You'll know exactly what's in your inventory, where everything is, deploy Wi-Fi passwords, secure company data, enforce passcodes. Look, you've got Apple devices in your business. Maybe it's time to, to keep track of them. Macs and iPhones and iPads. It's really interesting to watch our business change. Uh, you know, as more and more people uh, are, are working here, it's gone from being some simple Windows machines to a ton of Apple products. It's almost all Apple now. And Jamf now is a huge, huge benefit. No IT experience needed. You can set up and manage and protect your Apple devices in minutes. Focus on your business, but keep track of your assets. Cover your assets with Jamf now and start securing your business today. And by the way, I love that you can create a free Jamf now account and manage your first three devices for free. J-A-M-F, jamf.com slash MacBreak. Add additional devices for just $2 a month per device. It's easy. It's inexpensive. And it's very powerful. J-A-M-F. Jamf now at jamf.com slash Mac break. Kind of a legendary name in uh, the Macintosh world. And a great new product from him. Jamf now. I think we should do some picks of the week. I'm going to start on from left to right. Mr. Rene Ritchie. So I have a quasi self-serving pick this week. Uh, we have a... It, the same company that owns iMore owns a site called thrifter.com and all they do all day every day is find deals and what this team has done i don't work with them but i i know the guy who runs the team dan de silva he's he's awesome they have gone down to miami and rented a small area i don't know if it is actually a kind like of airbnb or something and the entire team of like 10 people are in there working like 24 <laughs> hours a day for the next 10 days wow. just finding and putting up and the thing i love about it 
um, and I use it all the time, is that they do it almost like Axios does news, where you click on it and it tells you like this is a deal and this is historically the low price. This is the oh, price it is now. This is a great. price we're expecting it to be. Is it worth getting because maybe it's low on stock and will run out? You know, maybe you can get it cheaper, but we don't think it'll show up cheaper during the holidays. Uh, and it just it, it gives you really, really good, really vetted really qualified stuff and they they really they they sit there and they debate whether a deal is good enough to go up and they really like they, they find like the itunes gift cards i always put in stocking stuffers uh and the home hubs which are really hot this year and like the nintendo services uh and they're just every time i look they've got a new deal up and they're working their their butts off uh for the next few days so if you're interested in stuff um i'm gonna be I used to do like, I used to do this every year. I I'd like load Best Buy and I'd load Amazon and I'd look around. This is and great. I try to, what a yeah, great no, site. See, and it's like what makes this deal worth considering? Things know before you buy, and they let you know like if there's any gotchas uh, or whether it's real money that's off or whether like because a real discount is still better than a gift card. You know, they, they give you all those details. This is really really fantastic. This is the best Black and, Friday and, site I've ever seen. This is the one Thrifter.com. And yeah, by the way. Ninety dollars for a one-year Apple Music membership. That's a good deal. That's a yeah. They've deal. got all, they've and they're putting them up all the time because some of them expire. Like you go there and they're sold out, or they're right. door crashers or whatnot, and they're always updating them. Really nice. Yeah. Thank you, Renee. Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week. Here it is. I saw this and it's been so analog. hard for me not to pick this up. It's a <laughs> it's a, a fidget it's, spinner. This is this is like the the Apple of fidget spinners. Like it's a oh, it's, it's called a, it's Focus Orbitals. You know, I saw this. Where where did I see this? Was it a Kickstarter or was it on uh, Amazon? No, my in full disclosure, my, my my cousin and his wife put it together. It's got uh, the suits, card playing card There's suits. Something about it, yeah. And they've, it's really they've heavy, got a couple nice metal. Ones. It is. Uh, this is nice. Yeah, it's the. Do you high know how end. hard it's been for me not to pick that up? What? I know. <laughs> it's been sitting there the whole show, I, I, and I, I've been wanting to pick it up. I and I thought, would. no, I, I knew you'd want to. I knew you'd want to play with touch it. it. That's it, nice. So, That's the nicest fidget spinner I've ever seen. It is. It is like this is it, and it's beyond a fidget spinner. It really is like a focused. Like there's something about it that you're just. Why do they have the suits on there? The card suits. Um, there's they have lots suits of different designs. Design. This just happens okay. to be one of them. So where this can is I not find a, it? It is on. It's an Amazon. Um, okay. And you and it's, I think if you find Focus, it's, it's called a Phi. And it's focus orbitals. focus orbitals, okay. And uh, um, and it's just got there's something about it that's a mixture of comfort and it's just the right size and precision. And now these are all magnets too, so you can pull them out. So if you want it to be like a little looser, like this. so you pull a couple of these out like that. So oh. now you now play with it. Now it's so unbalanced. Now it's a different. Ooh. See, so it's got like a different feel to it. You could pull out the balls. Yeah, because they're all they're all mm. magnets. So now it has a different feel to so it. So it's all magnetic. Yeah. So oh, oh yeah, see. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the hook is deep. Oh. So it is like, especially when you're thinking about like for the person who's got everything, you know, and they want to. Yeah, get, well, it's a hundred bucks. So uh, it's not it's not the least expensive one, but no. you know, we're all using Macs and iPhone iPhone wow. 10s. It so. is the Macintosh of fidget spinners. It, it, it is. It's just <laughs> wow. and it's it's and again, I think that it kind of transcends the fidget spinner thing because I don't I I have not fallen for the fidget. No, no, my kids have fidget spinners. My kids build fidget spinners. But this one is at a whole different level, and uh, anyway, it's um, it's 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 really slick. So focus that's, orbitals. I know it's very analog for, a, for an Apple show, but it's um, or is it fee? Might be fee because it's a uh, Greek word. Yeah, the fee. I actually don't know the pronunciation of focus, it. Focus at focus orbitals on Twitter, or and they've got lots of little movies of how they work. And, yeah, they do, and everything else. And uh, Anyway, it's, these are nicely machined. This is not. I can see why it's expensive. This is not. This is a non. And when you feel it, when you feel it, it's not yeah, a. It feels really. Uh, yeah, it's not a. It's not. It doesn't and feel it's only like a some little piece of plastic. Of Alex, come exactly. on, guys. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, how much would you pay? You yeah. could get seven of these for an Alex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Andy Anako, your pick of the week. Well, since we're talking about physics, I've, I've used this as pick of the week before. So it's quick, another quick plug for Fidgetopia because this is the holiday buying season. <laughs> oh my God, another the one. They do. This is the, this is the big Kahuna chainmail vortex, <laughs> and it's like a it's a, a stack of steel rings, just like in a really really tight like little vortex, and you can just sort of like roll them like one ring at a time one on top of the other, like that. And it really is like the 
like Captain Quig and the straw and the, the his ball bearings with the strawberries. Just you're you're just holding your hand like this and just sort of just it's like it's like a it's like a imagine like silly putty only made out of metals uh, steel rings. That's kind of like what it's like. It looks like Colossus's uh, Bezor. Yeah, it's it's pretty, <laughs> and it's also it's a very pretty thing. Just like on my desk, I just enjoy having this thing that makes me look interesting. And they also have my second, the, my travel one is the uh, I think I don't know what they call it, but this is bike chain, but it is really nicely set up, where it's just uh, one, two, it's like uh, eight links here, and it is like having like prayer beads that you can just sort of <laughs> like roll around your finger. Uh, the big kahuna is, I think it's the most expensive one they make is 25 bucks. Uh, this one is 18 bucks. Uh, and every, every time I buy something from them, there is a very nice handwritten note and a couple of Tootsie Rolls. So this is a very, this is a person, <laughs> this is like, a, these are like handmade stuff. This isn't like that comes off a boat from China either. So you feel, uh, you feel very, very happy uh, supporting someone who makes, is making some really, really cool things. I like them a lot. Uh, my actual pick of the week is uh, kind of, kind of lame, but it's very, very timely. I want to, we were talking about this earlier, even though I tended to talk about this. Uh, a lot of people have bought sous vide cookers based on my recommendations and our recommendations. We're big fans of sous vide cookers, those immersion water heaters. Uh, and whenever I'm cooking Thanksgiving dinner, I have completely moved away from let's roast an entire turkey and completely into let us buy a couple of like eight to 10 pound, like trussed up turkey breasts and sous vide them. Uh, definitely your first year you try this, you definitely want to transition into this by doing a smaller roast bird and then on the side of that you have a bonus uh, a bonus sous vide uh, breast because you don't want to go all in on a new thing for family Thanksgiving all in one year. Also, you're going to realize that the hardest part of sous vide is not the cooking, which is very, very easy, not making it hot, uh, moist and flavorful because you can hardly fail to do that. It's when you have to exp when your mother asks, so oh, how did you cook this? Like uh, 350 degrees? And uh, no, it was cooked at uh, a <clears throat> 142 degrees. What? 142 degrees. You're serving turkey cooked at 142 degrees. Are you trying to kill us for two and, and a half hours, mom? You're never you're never <laughs> hosting. Your I knew I should have brought. I, I told your father I should cook a turkey and bring it because you're going to screw this up. Uh, but yes, uh, two feet it really will change uh, the way you do Thanksgiving. I also do uh, uh, I also do mashed potatoes the day before, bag them up in the vacuum sealer, and then pop them in a sous vide just to heat them back up. And that's one less thing to do on on Thanksgiving Day, and they turn out perfect. Even if you go to the store, you can buy the prepackaged uh, mashed potatoes. Again, just <laughs> plop. <laughs> Uh, put it out of the, the package, put it into a bag, put it into the sous vide, boom, that, that's something taken care of. I, the, the, the overall thing I recommend is that just forget all about the <laughs> the cartoon TV movie style Thanksgiving that you've been forced – fed that you're supposed to have a beautiful golden brown cartoonishly shaped turkey that you present at the table and carve it's like no it's a, you're 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 there to achieve a result to have a to produce a really good meal involving turkey green beans mashed potatoes stuffing and cranberry sauce and you can articulate those five ideas however you'd like but so long as you get those five things on the table and and a uh, maybe one selection between red and white wine and sodas for the kids you're golden. However, and so don't don't invite all kinds of stress onto your life because you must roast the turkey and you must do it must be all intact when you bring it to the table and you must do the beans this way. Again, bo boiling water is usually the easiest way to cook a turkey, I find. <laughs> there you have it. And actually, I should mention you. You, uh, I think, it was many years ago, mentioned this sous vide, uh, ridiculously expensive sous vide <laughs> cooker, the Mellow. Mine finally came. <laughs> and actually, I, I will demonstrate it. You'll see it Saturday at, at work uh, in the new Screensavers show. And they are offering $100 off for uh, Black Friday, which means it's only a ridiculous $399. I'm sorry, $100, $299 instead of $399. It's Is this better off. than deep frying the turkey? That's my only No. <laughs> I'm just going to say no. But it is the best way to make soft boiled yeah. eggs you've ever had. And what I really like about it is this is a sous vide device that chills and heats so one of the biggest problems with sous vide is it's ours like that turkey uh, breast recipe that you mentioned from serious eats kenji right. uh, alt lopez who's great takes two and a half hours of sous videing time so if you're at work and you have to come home it's at five and you don't eat dinner till eight you may not be super happy but the mellow 
You put it in when you leave. It keeps it cold. You say, this was the greatest thing. I put two steaks in, and, I, and, it's, and it says, well, how well you want them cooked, and you get to choose. How thick are the steaks? You get to choose. And then it says, it doesn't say what temperature. It doesn't say what time. It just says, and when would you like to eat? And you say 6 p.m., and it says, good, we'll handle it from here. It chills it until whatever it is, an hour and a half before dinner time, and then it cooks it, and it's ready, and it's all on your uh, smartphone, your iPhone. I admit they're expensive at 300 bucks because really, frankly, the Anova, which will probably be on Black Friday sale at about 100 bucks, works it's, perfectly well. Yeah. But this I was is going to say it's kind of cool. It's already on it's already on sale at Amazon for 93, $94. That's so. when I bought my Anova and I use both. Yeah. But there's some things that are really cool about this. For instance, uh salmon, you know, it'll keep it chilled. You wouldn't want to leave it in a sous vide bath and I and turn on the I mean, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I've often thought that they need to make a really small one just just for eggs. Like I, I'd this really is okay the best. With, I have one eggs. of the first things I did, and eggs you don't eggs need to put so in a, a vacuum bag. Yeah, you just drop them in. You just drop them in. Well, you'll see. On Saturday, I made soft boiled eggs. I, I make them often that way. They're just it's so, so great. Perfect. I have those. You remember those little those little martini glasses that I have? Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the little ones. I, yeah. I, I you, you just put an egg in, put there. in there and put a little salt on it. A little, I love little, it. Little black well, truffle salt that we talked watch, about earlier. Watch on uh, <laughs> watch on Saturday because I also. We we taped it already because we nobody wanted to work on Thanksgiving. But <laughs> I, I brought my I brought my childhood egg cup that I used to eat soft boiled Aww. eggs in. Oh nice! There's one left, and uh, and I brought it in that and I and Megan vouched for it. And on this, you get to choose between how do you want the yolk creamy, velvety, custardy. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get to choose. Dang, but this yeah. is a very expensive. Show Don't buy me. it. Don't buy it. I'm telling you, it's too expensive. But it sure is great. And but it's beautiful. beautiful. It's, it has a it's little. It has a scale built in, so when you put something in, it goes, oh, you put something in. What is it? What would you like me to do with it? Right. Yeah. If they were any closer you, to the Andy. future, if no, I, I will accept the blame because that's if this were any closer to the future that we imagined when we were kids, it would there would be like all it's missing are like two like cartoon like robot arms with big white gloves yes. that like take the egg and crack it like yes. that and then and put themselves like back into, the, into a drawer. Yes. yes, it's actually really fun. I haven't tried the uh, the uh, microwave burrito in it yet, although Andy it's, tells me it's very good. It's I had I had I I had frozen it's it's how I cook like frozen I, I do have some convenience meals I I try not to you know, I have to have them in the in the fridge just in right. case but I have a, 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 a general general Charles chicken uh, like frozen up and instead of like putting with a microwave or whatever again you just sous vide them and if they come up anything that does not have to be crisp is almost always going to be perfect yeah. and like, like the the great thing about the mellow is that i i find that for me i just if the it's not so much the cooking time and the preparation time that gets me it's the fact that i oh, that before sous vide i would have to do all the cooking right before i eat right. and the last thing i wanted and i would much rather just sort of like show up for dinner and find that someone has already done the cooking for me yeah. and that's pretty much what sous vide yeah. is like you still have so to for, for a lot of these things you'll want to brown them in some way and i had some suggestions for that they're not actually, closing it i find it interesting that they don't they're not closing well the, yeah, that's the weird they provide you with ziploc bags that you could but you know i have the this is another product if you really want to go crazy the vac master VP two nineteen, baby. Wait, wait, hold it's on. the Kill Mac. Me, it's the Mac <laughs> truck of vacuum sealers. All my money. <laughs> it's more All than. My money. I saw that. Okay, I, think, I have to admit, I have. I didn't know I had any limits, and I Is and this I saw your limit? The, the Vac Master, and I went, "Oh, I need to get one." I looked at it, Lord, like, "No, you don't." I'm gonna knock. Yeah, it. See, like I, I, I backed what away. I, 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 I actually, I actually Step stepped away, from the, away from the credit card. You know, yeah. I, that was this was. This I can, was but come this over was, and you can use it. My limit. Come over, you can use it. I have the VP two fifteen. It's only a thousand dollars. But is it great? Here's here's what it is. You can buy an iPhone for that. You mentioned you mentioned that oh I've, I've also bought I got, I'm all in I bought a vacuum sealer and I'm thinking oh you, that one of those really cool like sixty dollar food sealers I got no. I realized, my God he bought the one that's in the chopped kitchen <laughs> <laughs> oh my God but it's amazing isn't it so yeah so yeah and you get the special <laughs> bags oh, and you put it in and uh, what it is is it's a chamber sealer it's chamber vacuum mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you know it's chemistry you put it in there you close the lid. And you don't have to hold the lid down because immediately it creates enough of a vacuum. The lid's sealed. You couldn't open it if you wanted to. And it goes for a minute, sucks all the air out of it. And the best parts are the sounds. And then at the end of it, it goes and the, and the lid opens because there's no more vacuum. And it's done. And it's perfectly yeah. sealed. And it's the actually clover. great for you, you, just have a roll, you just have a roll of... No, I didn't. You can get individual bags. I just get it. And, and how does it seal the bags? It has a heat sealer. 
So there's a so the lip of the bag goes on a bar that will get hot after it sucks all the air out. Then right. it puts the then right, it seals right. the bag. And, and for like freezing stuff for cheese, like I get big chunks of cheese. Yeah, I get yeah. big blocks of cheese and cut it up and f and put it in the fridge. Right. And because there's no oxygen, it doesn't it lasts yep. stuff lasts forever. No I get, freezer I, burn. I see, you seal you seal mm. up leftovers. They last several extra days. I buy fresh meat that never go into the freezer, but it will last a few extra days. For again for me, because again I want someone else. I don't want to cook meals. I want someone else to cook meals and then serve it to me but i, I can't hire yeah. somebody to do that for me so like so if i'm home Come on sundays it will be it will be just like it will be just like my grandma's house like I've, at my place I've, every sunday because i've got a couple of pots of like beans and rice going i've got some some pasta going i've got some some steaks going so that by two or three o'clock i will have one really good meal on the day but then i will have vacuum sealed like I, like almost the equivalent of like five lean cuisines of homemade food of things that are already vac cooked and vacuum sealed in bags all it's to so do is awesome. put it in the sous vide yeah still well still even better in, in you know what i do andy i'll reheat. sous vide it first then put it in the fridge and it's still good a couple of days later or freeze it so it's already been sous vide and yeah, then exactly. you could, and There's, then you could, you could sear it or whatever. And I got and right, that's I the other thing I got. It'll, it'll go into the sous vide twice. It'll Which go. Yeah. Oh no, you, you got the. Oh, you, you, you got the, you got the sears all. You got the. Sears I have all. a sears all. That's not so expensive. I got a Solaire grill. So the Solaire <laughs> grill is like a giant sears all. So the idea of the sears all is that you have a butane torch, like brazing torch, that plumbers would use. Uh, and then you have attached to it the sears all device, which heats up a metal plate. And you're ki and you're cooking it. You're searing it with radiant heat instead of flame. Well, that's how this grill works. <laughs> it, it's a gas grill, but instead of flame, it heats up ceramic plates to a thousand degrees. Mm. Then you take your sous vide turkey or chicken or steak. You put it in there for one minute. Right. <laughs> it's like done. Yeah. And uh, it's perfectly seared. Is that inside or outside? There's a portable one. Right? They have them inside. They have them outside. There's mm. there's desktop. Uh, I got one that looks just like a gas grill, basically, but you can get all you know a cart. I'm looking for an electric one that'll do that, but it, yeah, no, you the... need you need the gas, and this just uses propane tanks. Although you can, you know, plummet to your natural gas if you wanted to put it, make it part of your kitchen. Right? Oh, they have they have they have solar infrared gas. Oh, infrared. This is all infrared. Still, yeah, but it's still a gas grill. It's a it, because you can't like electricity Eiffel, wouldn't yeah. heat it up fast enough, but yeah. the gas does. Yeah. You know, three minutes, it takes three minutes to get it to a thousand degrees. It takes a minute to cook the steak on each side. Yeah, my done. grill. Uh, Five minutes later. The grill at my house gets to about 650 degrees, yeah. and that's not quite. No, this is a thousand. Uh, I'm telling you, come over. Right. Come over. We'll vac master. We'll solar. Uh, <laughs> okay. By the way, I did we not all bring the solar expensive. or the vac master into the new screensavers. The, the were, my, uh, if I brought the, if I bought the solar, shame. my wife would be like, there is already a grill built Well, in. I have a big green egg, too. I know, and I, know. I have to say, we did it. We did. We did. We did ribeyes, and the big green is better because you get that smoky flavor. But you mm -hmm. have to, you know, put coal in and fire it up. And I still use the big green egg for the. Well, I I, I love I, the big green egg. Beer butt chicken. Yeah, nothing like it. Yeah, beer butt chicken. Yeah, you can't really. I just realized how how easy it is to to cook an entire meal using techniques that my mother, none of which my mother would. Isn't that interesting? Recognize. See, yeah. For me, the rule is for me when I buy something is like this is going to be a conversation piece when my friends come up. You, you, like, like it's not just that I want to cut <laughs> cut it up. It's like that we're, we're going to talk about it. I will gonna, next week with it and... just bring in an audio recording of the vac master because it, <laughs> it's extremely satisfying. I don't know Star if it's a thousand course. bucks satisfying, but it's extremely satisfying. <laughs> oh, Anybody oh. has a deer they want to cut up or whatever i i got the vac master yeah you're right it's probably what they use on those on those it does make a difference that the, when the vacuum shows. sealing is easy like i have a cheaper oh, I, do I, have, I have a cheap little vacuum sealer i had an industrial one and i lost it in some move i buy and the so, bags 1000 at a time i know and then you just do a whole bunch of them and you get yeah. everything out like it's like Everything's a saturday morning you put a whole yeah. bunch of stuff in the freezer like i i buy whole um <laughs> Whole filet mignons that like perfect, and then you cut them all up, and perfect. it's so much cheaper that way. Absolutely, and then you put the different things in them, and you write on the salt. outside. I I put this on it, and I use this salt, and then I did you know whatever, and then you throw them into the freezer, yep. and then you're you're good to go. And now I'm hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thank I'm you, so everybody. Right now, <laughs> uh, we do Mac, we do Mac break and sous vide weekly every uh, every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1800 UTC. Wait, Renee, are you using sous vide yet? I, I I have everything packed away right now, but I do have a sous vide. Because you're oh. the odd man out here, no, you know. He's like, not. yes, no, I do. No, I bought two of them. Well, my, mine hasn't. My one Leo just described hasn't shipped yet, but I have the. Um, oh, you bought Inova. the Mello. Wow. Yeah, same time, same day you did. Andy got us both. Boom, boom, quick succession. <laughs> wow. 
Well, and that's why for a long time I put off sous vide because I thought I'm getting the mellow. Yeah. But after waiting for two years, I finally said, I better get yep. an ANOVA. <laughs> you, know, you know what's next for you, though? What? Centrifuge. Think centrifuge. Ooh, what can I do with that? <laughs> yeah. I just want to cook you, with the power of the you can, sun. You can, you, can, you can extract the essence of things by spinning oh. them spinning them really, really Oh, fast. I wouldn't mind a centrifuge. Yeah. I have yeah. a whole lab. Mm -hmm. There's I'm a saying. whole lab in the pantry yeah, yeah, with all this stuff on there. Just, think, I got, just do a little I got research. I a, a, a dehydrator, too. Oh. There's nothing better. You take a pineapple yeah. and you dehydrate it. Oof. Alex, you're, you're, like one those, beef you're like one of those. Oh, yeah. You're like one of those music fans that stopped listening to REM once they everyone started listening to REM. Like, oh, people. Yeah. Oh, Andy Leo drinks sous, sous vide. So what's, what's the next thing after sous vide? So I can. <laughs> Not only did I stop listening to it, I used to be the music director for an alternative rock station. <laughs> like, like, like it was my job to know what was coming up next. Beef yeah, Team <laughs> gives the Solaire a thumbs up. Beef Team is uh, yeah. actually works at uh, I think it's Purdue, right? In, he's in the agriculture agriculture department there, <coughs> teaching people how to make better beef. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, he knows mm. what he's talking about. He says Solaire is good. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for being here. We will be back next week, as I said. If you want to watch live, please do. But join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv if you do, because it's fun to be part of that community. Uh, you can also watch the shows on demand at twit.tv/mbw. Subscribe so you get it every single episode. Uh, you'll find Annie Anako at the Chicago Sun Times. His website cwob.com. He also does shh, a material Android podcast on uh, Relay.fm. It's all about I'm bringing Android. down the state from within. Don't tell oh, anybody. Shh. And now that Renee's using the Pixel Two XL, maybe we can get him to do a <laughs> Android podcast. You should get him on Material. iMore.com, where he covers all the great stuff, uh, including Pokemon Go and Apple and Mac and all that <laughs> stuff. And probably fidgets as well. You yes. can also hear his great podcasts at every... Uh, I'm doing a daily show now, Leo. God help me. What? <laughs> Vector every day. Oh, my. I didn't realize Vector yeah. was daily. No, I, well, I, I, I brought it back. And now it's like, so today we have Dan De Silva. Tomorrow we have Don Melton. The uh, next day we have the analyst, stuff. Jan Dawson. I you mean, it's just... You can't not I, do it every we'll day. We'll see if I live. Yeah. We'll see if I live. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, Alex Lindsay. He's at the Pixel Core. Follow the best thing to do with Alex here is uh, follow him at... Alex Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, on the Twitter, because he'll announce whatever's going on. Open for memberships? No, we're not open for membership. We, we, we're, 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 we're looking really closely at Patreon, because they've added a whole bunch of things. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, it's just an... That's a better they, well, way to do there it. There was a bunch of things that were missing um, from Patreon. Yeah. And then they added most of those in and an API. And so now we kind of feel like that's a better solution for us. And so we're <laughs> trying to work through that right now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be in... Um, in Delhi next week. So if you're uh, if you're from Delhi, um, uh, poke. And if they if you see a chicken tikka tiki, if you see a chicken tikka masala maker, you know they don't they don't you know <laughs> that's an English dish. It's an English dish. What they don't make that's it in India? The, 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 I, I think you might be able to. I, it's not an Indian dish. It's it, oh, that's, that's a London and, dish. Gee. Yeah, yeah. It's my, oh, it's butter I, chicken. Mm. Yeah. Butter chicken. None of that's Indian. Yeah. No, huh? no, well, bring that's me all some. Most of Chinese. Food I actually can't Chinese eat either. Indian food very yeah. well. Not like from I, I, I work in India occasionally, and it, I I can't process it. Like I just it's it's the oils or the spices or something. The but it's the ghee. I love the ghee. I, I make my own ghee. Is. Ghee is a very it's useful a clarified thing. butter. Yeah, yeah. you got to have clarified butter if you're cooking. No, no, I don't think I don't think that's it. I, anyway, I don't know what it is, but I, I can't. Okay. Well, have fun in Delhi. I will. That sounds it's, awesome. The, the, the pollution index is a little high right now. I'll be working. <gasps> that's right. Delhi's the one that's it's worse going down. Than Beijing. It's going down, but it, like I, you track it oh. when you're going, and I was like, I was like, it was. I thought I was looking at the wrong chart. Like I was like, oh. it was like it was six hundred and it's off the books. It was like six hundred and fifty, and I was like six hundred and fifty. Isn't that the one that's supposed to not go above fifty? <sighs> and it's getting down. It's I've now seen, down to three hundred and something. It's oh like down. It's to, okay. Uh, a, fr a friend of mine spent like a week and a half there and was wearing one of those like air face masks. And when he got home, he was able to like take that mask to a metal recycler and made enough money back to pay for <laughs> almost the whole trip. It was loaded with silver. Yeah. Um, do you wear a? a Breezer? I have. It hasn't been this bit, this this bad before. So I'm 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 not going to spend much time outside. I'm Yikes. working. So it's not like I'm sightseeing. I'm I'm going to be in in buildings the whole time. All right. So. Well, have a great trip and but, come but, back soon. But I'm probably going to try to do some kind of get together um, in Delhi. In Delhi. So nice. so I'm in, in. Is it New Delhi or Old Delhi? It's new. Oh, I don't know. It's <laughs> Delhi. I, I you know. I don't understand the whole thing. And I say Mumbai, and then my Indian partner says that's oh, just Bombay. And we I'm call it like, Bombay oh, here in India. Bombay. So confusing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. All right. I'll say hi to Modi for me. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time. But now, I'm sorry to say it's time to get back to work, because guess what? Break time is over!